that snowball effect just slowly add up over time. It's a small mistake. Those small mistakes add up, and it could lead to that big mistake of losing the round. I think when you've got yourself on the back foot here, you immediately switch off this Ryan Lucio and instead go for a double bubble style and really, really pressure those two main healers in the back that are getting all of that value. Immortality build forced out there by Girthquake. Maybe Shiva does find the Fire Strike kill onto Carol. That's not going to be good for the rest of Northern Essex. They're trapped in this room, not able to get out, and that will be a very quick and clean fight for the side of Dominguez Hills. But Infernosis, to go back, I, I think you just go with double bubble here. You pressure those main healers that are sitting in the back for free, and you really force Mame Shiba on that Reinhardt to do a bunch of things at once. We talked about in the previous series, not easy for him to do, being so subjective to this power creep that is the current state of the... Uh, Freaky J was uh, struck by a vehicle. So, yeah, it, it, it um, definitely uh, looks to be a traffic accident. Maybe need to follow suit there, but here comes... Of course, the visor from Danny. I stated at the very beginning, I called it Danny is one of the best Soldier 76s I've seen in the NECC, and they are just just letting me be known, saying, hey, Caster's Curse will not be uh, true, and it will, in fact, be factual, and they're just continuing to go that. So with Maim Shibo Shatter available, 3D Hizzy has a grab. They can lock this up if Maim Shibo is aware of the direction they're coming from. We'll probably see 3D Hizzy just dropping in. That's uh -oh. exactly what'll happen. There's no time to contest. A shadow will come from Kermy. They do have Freaky J in the background after not getting hit by a car this time around. And now I knew comes from Osiris. It finds E-Metal. Danny was able to take Freaky J out, however, and the Immortality Field taken out by Osiris. 3D Hizzy and Maim Shiba finding two of their own, but a Graviton Surge dropped from Tilted, but there's no one really left to contend with it. Only two players left for one side and one for the other. It's just Tilted left on site. I don't think Freaky J will have time to recontest, and they will not. First round will go in favor of CSUDH. Well, Infernosis, I felt like I barely got to see City Center before we were off of it. A quick 100 to 0 there. Unfortunately, Northern Essex falling pretty quickly to Dominguez Hills. They're looking dominating so far. Like you said, Danny looking very good on that soldier. Uh, unfortunate that Freaky J uh, found the hood of that car, uh, or else they maybe would have had a second fight in there, but instead, they find themselves now on University, and this is where we'll really get to see that brawl really come out and we just saw it at the highest level in gladiators and we'll see northern essex offered as well this very meta style composition with freaky j on the may osiris still on the mccree here and this is uh this is what you look for in a composition and i think this should be overwhelmingly more damage than what danny can bring to the table on that soldier as long as they can stop it and be very abrupt and quick with these uh flashbang fan the hammers onto the opposing front line yeah, and already the brawl going on top. Earthquake with the May with Freaky J supporting the opposing side, but it's already going in favor once again of CSUDH. Freaky J and Kermie out for the count. Another one of Zarvi felled by a fire strike from Name Shiva. They're looking to continue going forward. Osiris will find one constellation kill to 3D. Is he now a second into Danny? That may have brought them back into it, but Name Shiva will not miss the fire strike, striking Osiris out of the record books. And a nice clean right click from Metal will take Tilted out. And CSUDH will take the objective, but now a bit of a stagger. We may be able to see Northern Essex return fire and be able to retake this. They'll have at least three to go forward, but I think the uh, CSUDH sprinters, such as Danny and Lucio, will be able to assist in making the return just a little bit faster. Yeah, legs will make it back in time. Opposing walls go out. Immortality Field drops a little early for the side of Northern Essex. That's going to be going to be gone quickly here, but Maim Shiva does fall, and you see the speed boost here now from the rest of Northern Essex. They're going to want to get in here and fight as quickly as possible. Are able to clean it up. Freaky J finding a couple good right clicks there. You do see Girthquake stalling for as long as possible. Just another form of utility and tension that that may brings to the table. And uh, about 40% in, Dominguez Hills will have to push back and now attack University against Northern Essex. who will get their first shot at defending here and see their first upward tick of percentage throughout this uh, this Oasis map. Absolutely, and this is their this is the first, and uh, hopefully. If you are a Northern Essex side, it's not going to be the last. Uh, Girthquake will drop down a blizzard. They will be able to escape out of most of it, but Kermie will not. Osiris gets a high new kill to Danny, but Danny had just gotten a Helix rocket kill to Freaky. Metal finding Kermie out. They were frozen and now in an unfortunate position. You will see the beat drop from Metals. They keep them inside. But Night Fury and 3D Hizzy, they're uncontested. 3D Hizzy with a 3D Quickie finding all of them in the end. And now Northern Essex are back on the but end of it and CSUDH have retaken this point. Oh. You not like that one? I can't stand you, I think. You, <laughs> you I think you're my least like favorite person, and there's a lot of people like that. 
Oh, um, really? Yeah, I, I Northern you Essex. Shut up. Northern Essex <laughs> is gonna try and contest here. Grabbed onto point. The Blizzard's there as well. This is huge for Northern Essex. They gotta kill the Immortality Field though. There we go. Finally, Kirby's able to swing forward, takes down Mame Shiba. The Shatter does connect with 3D as the will immediately fall. Did I say Kirby? No, Kirby just just charged into a wall and completely missed 3D Izzy. Hey. I was just, I was just as shocked at it. If there's anything about Zarya's hitbox is that it's very small and hard to hit. Except except they were five feet to the right. It wasn't anywhere close. It was it was it was maybe they were upset they missed the swing, so they just wanted to slam their face against the wall. I do uh -huh. the same thing. So uh, it's just interesting to behold. But CSUDH now need to go for a retake. They've got, got three the ultimates. To do it too, yeah, yeah they've, they've got it. I mean, Osiris can high noon if necessary. They will, in fact, hop down to the wall. Will come down, but Night Fury taken out. So no chance of that extra support of the heals now having to rely entirely on Lucio. And of course, the healing field that Danny can bring to the table with Mame Sheba already low and finished off by Kermy with a nice fire strike. It'll make things a bit more difficult. And now you'll see Northern Essex look to capitalize and maybe punish the last few players who are trying to escape away. Good job breaking that wall quickly as well, just to save Kermy, make sure that he's able to get back to that team safe and sound. Carol ready with that B drop. We'll see if she can do anything with it. Gonna have to negate either the visor or the shatter or the grab. Hopefully it doesn't get thrown preemptively here. They didn't need to commit both the immortality field and the B drop. This spells trouble for the shatter and this visor here. I can't imagine they win this fight after this, and it's going to very quickly go in the way of CSUDH, and that's Infernosis to, to harp on it quickly, that's why, especially when you run a BAP, you synchronize with your Lucio and you decide when are we going to B drop and when are we going to Immortality Field because they effectively do the same exact thing and they cannot be thrown at the same time unless it's absolutely necessary. Absolutely, you're 100% right, and while that may be a shock for some of you here that he is right, he, he absolutely is, and you take a look, Northern Essex now taking to the high ground, we're going to have a little bit more banter in this matchup, they're taking the high ground looking for an early pick, they'll fight with Osiris finding Danny, a grab does come out, sorry, not a grab, a blizzard does come out from Girthquake, and already wow. Mortality Field bot dropped, but it's it's being won by CSUDH, because they've got an amplification matrix, they've got the damage, and Northern Essex didn't really have the ults to play with, and so this round two will also go in favor of this Dominguez Hill side. Map one, Dominguez Hills all the way. Yep, they take it in a dominating fashion. University looked a lot better in Fernosis. However, they were able to ultimately take down Northern Essex and clean up that easy map two on University. And I think it comes down to feathering those, those support resources a little bit better there. And that stops not only this shatter, but it also stops this visor that you see Danny follow it up with and clean up those kills, especially with that late kill on Kermy, stops the contest from coming back so quickly. And um, unfortunately, nothing but trouble there as Northern Essex falls down 0-1. CSUDH geared up to take an easy sweep here as long as they can keep this momentum going. And what, what a great way to start off if you're a Dominguez Hills fan. That looked right? very well for them. No, no chance for Northern Essex to kind of make that resurgence, make the return. It just doesn't work out in their favor. But we'll have to see how the second one will pan out. And so we'll have to figure out what map that will be. We don't got the in-depth notes that we had. We don't get to see the, the fight win percentage. You know, we don't get to get the fancy numbers for it. But, you know, we have gotten to see these these teams and these players throughout the entire season. I think Dominguez Hills is actually one of the teams that I've actually casted the most here in the NECC. Besides maybe... Both Bama teams, the UNA and UAH team, I've casted them both quite a bit, but I think really Dominguez Hills individually is, wow. Listen, I know your dad, but I want my real dad to say he's proud of me, so. Uh. <laughs> proud of you, son. You did good. Thanks. Thanks, dad. I appreciate it. Now, <laughs> we've seen Dominguez Hills consistently, and they're staying consistent, starting off strong. For sure. Yeah. No, they absolutely are, and that's what's important here is that we've, we've, seen, them, we've seen them throughout the season be dominant and you know we talked about the same thing with Boise State just to go back to that is this this dominance can it maintain throughout this final series the only one that technically matters Boise State couldn't couldn't quite do it wasn't quite up to the task to deal with that second seed maybe we see a resurgence like you mentioned so so eloquently maybe we see a resurgence of that again where Northern Essex as that second seed can come in and upset that uh first seeded Dominguez Hills get the upset take this best of seven however they're automatically going to have to do it off the back foot as they find themselves falling on oasis let's we'll see what they pick as we will jump into a hybrid map um losing side will get the option of a ban 
and the map pick assumingly will choose to defend as well we'll just have to see um but infernosis to talk briefly you mentioned danny's soldier now mm. i haven't casted dominion's hills as often as you have is it just is it his high ground control is it the nutty visors is it finding helix rocket kills onto flankers what really surprises you and what sets him above those other soldiers like you mentioned the ability for Danny to mesh with E-Metal was a big one, first and foremost. Uh, Danny's positioning is usually top-notch, does a great job of staying behind cover. It's not necessarily a flank watch for Danny as much. It, they do have the capability to do it. It's holding high ground with assistance, playing behind their main tanks, and doing what they need to do. We saw, I think, three or four Helix Rocket kills in just that last round. I mean, we saw those, and Danny does it exceptionally well. The positioning, the Helix Rockets, all of it... You know, it's not like they're he's an owl player, right? They're not in the pro league. He's not this like insane league player. But Danny is really good on Soldier. It's a small niche to be able to play Soldier inside of competitive. You know, it's not a very highly picked in most metas, not a highly picked um, hero to say the least. And Danny manages to do it pretty well. But we are going to see the fact that Danny and Emadel and 3D Hizzy are going to be summed out in their place. Is going to be tilted. You're going to be seeing, uh, you're going to be seeing, uh, sorry, as it switched my, my brain for a second, you're going to see Zero come in, you're going to see Enzo come in, you're going to see Seaweed Brand come in for this Dominguez Hill side. So Seaweed we're not going to be able to see the, the Ana Visor combo, and we're not going to be able to see 3D Hizzy pop off on Zarya or Diva, but we will get to see Eichenwaltz, and this is, uh, this is one of my favorite maps. I think this was like my prime time of Overwatch when this map released. Yeah, and it's 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 weird too, right? Because when I think about Eichenwald, I think about if there is, like you said, not very meta is that soldier pick now, but if it can work, I think it's defense second phase Eichenwald. You take that, you take right on top of the castle, stick a Sigma up there with him, maybe a damage boosted uh, soldier, add the mercy to it, and uh, you're geared up for success. Holding that initial choke, phase two of streets with that soldier, I think that's one of the times that he can still work. So it's surprising that they do take Danny out, but man, am I excited to say Seaweed Brain? Because that's just the best name. I'm really excited to say Seaweed Brain a bunch of times. And luckily, you're, that just player... tired, you're just tired of hearing people say it to you, so you finally get to call that's other right. people that. I mean, yep. it's, old it's... Seaweed Brain <laughs> Unicorn. That's what they call me back <laughs> home in the marshes. Um, <laughs> where, where, are you, where are you from? <laughs> Uh, does it, are you Shrek? A place where seaweed is. <laughs> seaweed! There's seaweed there, okay? Alright, alright, alright. That's Listen. called an ocean. And marshes. I don't think marshes have seaweed. I don't know anything about... I, uh, only where I know to get seaweed is the beach and Minecraft. The sea, so, probably. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> that'd be a good place to start. If I wanted to find seaweed, I'd probably start at the sea. Mm. Um, speaking of, do you see the mirror matchup of Faras here? Freaky J on the Farah, Girth Quake on the Fara. You've got Zero on the Genji as well. The options for the Nano Boost are unlimited here for my boy Seaweed Brain. Yeah, it's interesting to see Girthquake not on Genji and, and to put Zero there instead because Girthquake is a phenomenal Genji. I think probably the second best Genji I've seen in the NECC. Uh, they played exceptionally well. I think their best map is Rialto, but apparently Zero is going to start off strong. They're going to find Kermi off an aggressive dash four. Now you've got Carol who's kind of getting caught off guard and will be punished accordingly. And Dominguez Hill has just stepped up and found literally wow. everyone. Yeah. Freaky gets one constellation kill, but that's all it is. It's it's a small, small, tiny presence in an otherwise marred round and starts. Now they have five minutes and 50 uh -oh. seconds to push the rest of the way. This is not yeah. working well right now for it, the Northern It Exorcist. came off the back of that huge anti from Seaweed Brain. And that's that's really what turned it around there. Or not even turned it around, that's what paved the way. Kermi fell immediately. The Immortality Field wasn't quite in time or it got destroyed. I honestly was more focused on saying Seaweed Brain as much as I could. But uh, Kermi fell immediately. And then after that, like you said, it was over before it even started. All the picks, and as you can see, all the ults economy in the favor now of the side of CSUDH as they'll begin to move this payload for free. And I like the idea from Freaky J and friends for NECC to take, we said we weren't going to do that, from Northern Essex <laughs> to take that high ground, but they're not really getting the picks they need, so you'll see them immediately jump back to payload, and this is where they should be with that Rhine composition. 
Yeah, already first picks coming through. Gurnthwake finding Kermit. They were to go to the top and just make it difficult for the tank to stay in, and that's exactly what happened. You see Freaky J attempting the same thing, but it's just not going to happen. And Night Fury, she is a... a, a I don't want to I don't want to call somebody a monster, but she's a monster. She is devastating. That, I mean, oh. we saw them saw her do it on Mercy, and now we're seeing her do it on Baptiste. Uh, honestly, Baptiste is easier, easier to do it on, but still with the ability and the technical skill to nail that, kind of wild. Girthquake with a barrage soloing, basically. Kermit does take any more utility fields out of Zara, and Main Shiva will find Osiris with a nice charge in knocking them off the map. Yeah, and you'll see them immediately push up here. Uh, at this point, Freaky J is forced to throw the barrage just to stop the staggers, and it still doesn't go in their favor. They do clean up Enzo and the immortality field that Night Fury threw out, but that immortality field was enough to save Maim Shiva, and that's a huge shatter, but I'm not sure the follow-up is there. That was a five-man shatter to come through, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to really matter. Freaky J was only able to capitalize to one kill, now two. Maim Shiva out for the count, so no mainline front tank. And now you're going to see Northern Essex trying to put the fight into their side and maybe push them in their spawn. Freaky J finds two again, so a 4K to end off that fight. They took Seaweed Brain and then knocked Enzo off the map. And they're going to get gra aggressive again. You can see Carol taking up the side with Freaky J. They're going to go to the high ground, maybe catch a player off guard. Already in a firefight with the opposing bar of Girthquake, but it's still anyone's battle and just two single hits can entirely change the pace. Sara drops the damage amplification matrix. And this fight can already start off strong. Yeah, in a weird spot is Freaky J and Carol. However, I like the idea of what they're doing. They're forcing the side of CSUDH to look everywhere. And once again, not something that Reinhardt's good at. Look at how out of place he is trying to get high ground just to allow for those hit scans, or excuse me, for the rest of the players of CSUDH to force out Freaky J. Now they're able to take this very aggressive hold on Eichenwald with just two players. The rest of them sit there at payload for free, and Freaky J and friends, huh? Six ults were up for a second there. For yeah, six ults were up for a second. Now they're not, <laughs> so you're a liar. Well, okay, Girthquake popped the barrage. Okay, now they've used every single ult except uh -huh. for the Shatter, and there is the Shatter from Kermy, which actually does win them the initial fight. Zero does get nano boosted with the blade, finding themselves too, but ultimately, I, I think Northern Essex kind of wins out because they didn't need to use every ult in human existence to win it. Yeah, and there's only two people on point right now, so Carol's going to get that bubble, try and stop any sort of progression. No one's going to make it back before the side of Tilted does, so he's going to be able to hold point for free now, make space for Kermit to get back, and you'll see the rest of CSUDH kind of dial it back to that front corner, resustain themselves after that huge ultimate fight, and Osiris is going to end that fight, or excuse me, this next fight before it even starts, with that high noon onto Enzo. No res available for CSUDH, and they'll have to buy their time and wait. And all I can think about is Infernosis is that this would have been a five and a half minute icon wall if not for that five man shatter from Kermit. Absolutely. And now they've got a good look at the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, basic, you're going to have the dam the damage amplification matrix come up from Zara. You're going to have uh, uh, Valkyrie come up as well, but there comes the matrix. They're going to get an increased damage boost. Valkyrie will be popped as well, realizing that the health of the team was low. Carol will be able to assist in that aspect while Freaky J finds zero. And uh, while having a far is strong by all accounts, being clustered inside these side pocket rooms is not the smartest decision for this Dominguez Hill side. They know that their main person they're having to deal with is Freaky J right now. They are pretty much putting their team of Northern Essex in their backpack, and they're just getting into rooms where they can continue to charge that ultimate and just deal, dish out tons of damage off of that AoE splat damage. And I think we've seen this, uh, unfortunately, far too many times from the Challengers division. It's their inability or their unwillingness to switch the composition. I don't think Genji continues to work here, and I don't think Nano Blade is a combo that you can rely on for point three while Freaky J is up in the air for free, wreaking all this havoc. A nice barrage comes through from Girthquake, and there goes the blade. No Nano to back it up. Zero Dust find Osiris proving you wrong, and the aspect Girthquake finds yet another into Zara. Mame Shiva finds Tilted, and this does look like we're going to see Dominguez Hills be able to force this back. I'm not sure we can see Northern Essex make the return. It will be close, and they cannot. So they close. Had, they just couldn't attach it in time. We didn't see the switch to a tracer. We didn't see a ball, and it, it costs them the push through. And we're going to see Dominguez Hills make it with a minute and 57 seconds. Left. We'll just round it up to two minutes, and... We'll just go ahead and say that it's a two-minute clock, and they made it all the way to the end. Now, Northern Essex has to replicate that same level of success. 
Yeah, they definitely do, and I, I think it's a lot better than seeing that five-minute time bake that they were very close to seeing, and once again, goes with sticking zero on that Genji for a little bit too long. The the blade's finally there, almost paired with that Nano, not quite at the end, but able to clean it up in combination with Girthquake's uh, Rocket Barrage from the Farah there. Now, as they go to defend, they'll want to have a lot better of a hold Ready than Northern Essex was able to put up, and they'll do it with an Ash and a tracer but without the damage boost from seaweed brain or night fury which i can respect in a gladiators division i'm not I sure if i would run an ash in a situation like this without that damage boost of mercy however it's their strat they've got it figured out so i'm assuming that we'll see some crazy plays from Girthquake, who has so far been pretty nutty on the dps he's chosen I think I think a lot of it might just come down to getting Girthquake to hit one shot and then Zero, who's going to be a constant thorn sure. in the other yep. system's night to finish it off. And if, if there's a team that can pull out that level of coordination, I would probably expect it to be Dominguez Hills. Uh, they've got good communication. They work extremely well together, and they've been super consistent. They have, like, three extra subs just in this match watching and have been already subbed out once. They've got people that they're rotating in. If they're able to keep that level sure. of coordination yep. with that many people... It's pretty It's pretty constant. They're very consistent about that. But a flank play does go around, you can see. And I don't know if it's actually being watched in the moment because we don't actually have the observer view in front of us. But Freaky J and Carol are flanking all the way through, hoping to get the backside of the opposition. But because of that, you're now seeing the side of Dominguez Hills take the aggressive stance because they know that Northern Essex is up two players down. Yeah, they are. I mean, immediately you'll see Mame Shibo take that pin in, get the bubble as well. Just wants to make his name known on point for this defense and uh, the fight will stop briefly for northern essex but they'll want to walk right in here a little bit slow on the rotation but osiris still able to find a pick on tonight fury both immortality fields taken down but not before osiris and freaky are able to find those picks and northern essex should have this in the bag as far as an attack is concerned yeah, some CB Brain does get an answer into Osiris, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be a big difference. It's just zero. They have a pulse bomb. Not expecting to see the most fantastic play to go for it, and they will, in fact, be felled by Osiris. The stun narrowly misses as they had, you know, dashed away, but they'll still be able to collect and clean, clean up with the last kill. And now this is where the high ground will be held by this Dominion Hill side. You're going to see Night Fury up top. You're going to see the Ash player of Girthquake up top. And you're, this is where even more poke damage from this Tracer of Zero will just be able to stack on and add up because you just have free reign from above and free reign from the sides. Yeah, absolutely. And I like this call here as well to keep Mame Shiva on the low ground. That allows Girthquake to have all the space in the world. No one's addressing him high ground because they all have to look at Mame Shiva. However, Osiris getting a pick onto Zero could open this up differently. But still, you see the side of CSUDH push forward because the Bob is there and that will stall, at least for now, the attack from Northern Essex. But here comes Kirby on a rampage, but taken out by a fire strike from Mimshiba. Ooh, a Graviton Surge does come out from Tilted, looking to step forward, but Kermi has been slept in the process. Name Shiba now Nano boosted out. They're gonna go with a Fire Strike, looking to step forward. Name Shiba does have Shatter, but Kermi's low, using any more Tony Phillips to stay alive. Freaky J felled by a Dynamite from Girthquake. Oh. Traded Shatters, and that one might just be the end. Name Shiba doing so much damage on top. Night Fury and Zero cleaning up on the Zara and Kermi, and it looks to be Dominguez Hills just getting the last few ticks of damage to Tilted, and they're able to take a step back after having a dominant performance and winning that team engagement. I love the Rhine 1v1. It's so fun to watch the mind games. Mame Shiba allows two of his team members to be shattered. That forces, not forces, but that makes Kermi put his shield down because he wants to damage those people on the ground. Mame Shiba takes that opportunity to throw the Earth Shatter himself and finds four with it. That cleans up the fight for the side of CSUDH. And Osiris, unable to find anything with that high noon, the late immortality field stops that. This looks like at the current moment, it's just going to be another three and a half minutes of Dominguez Hills just dominating and not allowing Northern Essex to play past this door. They can't get through the arch. They can't get through this gate. They've made it about five meters past it. And I, I would I would love to know what that actually is. I'm American and don't know actual distances, but they, they haven't made it very far and they're struggling to continue to do so. Stop laughing at that. Why is, why is that the joke you laugh at? <laughs> and it, it just seems to be that Dominguez Hills is, is making it near impossible for the Northern Essex side to go through. Producer, I if I wanted to learn, I would have paid attention in high school. <laughs> well, uh, you know, on, to talk about Overwatch for a while, I um, I think, honestly, 
I, I don't see a reason for uh, for Northern Essex to be switching this up. I don't know why they're not just running Carol on Lucio now. I get the idea of wanting to match the double healer comp that uh, that CSUDH are running, but if they had a Lucio, they'd be able to avoid this high ground and just walk forward for free. They did win a fight while you were talking about elementary math, um, and now Zero is able to take out Freaky J. Uh, not ready with a high noon yet, but he's got the high ground and. No one's up there to stop him just yet. However, Bat missing some heals, missing the anti nade. There we go. We finally got zero some help. <laughs> <laughs> Actually missed the bio nade on him and four Bat shots. He's able to get a little bit healthier. I love to see it. Uh, he's going to hold that high ground for free. Going to opt back to play the brawl, though. He's behind them. He wants to find something crazy with a flank. Yeah, that, that ground on Surge makes massive impact, but Immortality Field will save a lot of it off. But Kermit does find a pick to main Shiva free track back by Night Fury. It's an attempted visor from Osiris, but immediately removed. You'll see Carol revive Kermi. Freaky J trying to keep this one alive with the Storm Arrow to zero. A Shatter goes through. This finds three. This might be enough with a Dragon Strike comboed. It takes two. Kermi might just save this one with a friendship. This is the power of it. Bob now just ready to be knocked off the map. Kermi's looking for maybe the right way to swing to take them down. They're going to have some support from it, but this might be what keeps Northern Essex in this, and I can't agree more that we need to see a Lucia right now from Carol. It's just they need the speed. They need to be able to contest in this fight. Freaky J switching to Hanzo is a great plan. Freaky J is a mo point one oh one meters. That's like an inch or something, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh. Yeah. I think the Lucio switch is what changes this. I mean. All. I mean. You know. We, we can't. We can't harp on them too much. They're two minutes and fifteen seconds away from taking this. They're. They're. They're getting it figured out right now. Playing this corner effectively, making space. I like it here. Both BAP ultimates forced out. Immortality field taken down. Night Fury unable to have one of those for this upcoming fight. And Mame Shiva finds a fire strike kill into Osiris. They're gonna have to commit the nano. I. Uh, you know, they probably didn't even have to do that. After Mame Shiva found that fire strike, after Night Fury's immortality field was taken down, I honestly think that CSUDH just walks forward without any ultimates and is able to take that for free if they play it safe and carefully enough. But they commit the nano to it, commit the shatter. They're able to find the kills all the same. And Carol does go to that Lucio. I think a smart move here is they'll want to take this brawl quickly. Ooh, uh, well, yeah, okay. well... That was a smart move, but Zero says, uh, Zero my hero for Carol, and not allowing them to even snap out of the spawn for any eventual impact. And now you're going to see a craft on Surge. This actually goes to the payload combo with the Dragon Strike. No one to really assist. It's Freaky J in the feed, finding five. It's going to be Bomb on the feeds. It's a seven-player feed. Freaky J got five of those tilted, found an actual player, while Zara uh, helped out, I guess. They got Bob. You know, it's fine. It's not a big yeah. deal or anything. It's it's a new series, so I get another one, but that's just an unironic sheesh right there, you know? That's just another sheesh. <laughs> that's true, you've it's used your series. sheesh now, I it's get a really new difficult one. to do more. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have saved it, you know? Maybe, maybe, no, maybe that's a good moment. too early. That's a good moment, that's a good moment. We're gonna have to see another good moment, though. Northern Essex is running out of time. A big shatter does come through. It actually managed to connect to, I believe, only one, though. An immortality field with the amplification matrix down. We'll make it a little bit easier. Mame Shiva finds a kill to a science with a fire strike. They'll drop their own here. Zara puts the matrix down. Mame Shiva goes for the shatter, but it's blocked by Kermi, who got bubbled up. But Mame Shiba is nano boosted and can just walk in and swing in. Nothing that really Northern Exits can do to stop it. They'll just take this L and they'll have to pray they can make it back in time. But I don't think it's going to happen. They are stressed for time and they're not going to be given the space to do so. 10 seconds left. Tilted wanted to keep that charge so badly on the Zarya. Kermi going to try and walk forward. Carol is there to help. Has to walk forward and contest point herself, though. Gets fell by Night Fury with that headshot. And CSUDH take Eichenwald up 2-0 in the final series. Once again, Night Fury on the support is fragging out Infernosis. It's a problem. Absolutely is. And I think this is the I think this is the shot heard around the world right here. Uh, is this was a very well done. A sheesh heard around the world. Yeah, that's that's definitely not gonna go in some YouTube montage of dumb casters moments like <laughs> <laughs> oh, there isn't one of those, is there? I don't want to be. In I there. sure hope not, because <laughs> yeah. I am, I am the sole proprietor of that at that point. <laughs> I think that I have that one in the bag.
Like I said, when I'm casting with Fellow for Valor and or R6, it's just sheeshes and down bads all around. I mean, it is just a bunch is, of zoomers. It's just one big zoomer fest. All the jokes are stolen from him, though. He's in high school as a senior. I'm in college. I, I'm not hip with the kids. I'm not cool. Like, yeah. my back won't break, but I, I feel as old as okay. you. All right. You know, it's a new series now. You don't have to recycle jokes like that because they're just cruel and hurtful. Uh, <laughs> well... We are going to send it over to the panel, probably a little nicer to each other than we are here at the uh, at the casting desk booth place. Um, we're going to send it over to them. They're going to talk about some relevant stuff, probably talk about Overwatch for a while. Uh, talk new. about these two teams and and what more importantly, talk about how CSUDH is up 2-0 here. Very important series. We'll get more series as it goes along. We promise we care. And see if Northern Essex can flip this around. Jacob and Coach Jim are going to have some insight into if they can and how they're going to be able to do it. Send it over to them for now. How are we doing, folks? We're at the break here. Dominguez Hills currently up 2-0 over, over Northern Essex. We're still waiting for Caroline Shaw to go off here. The Shuckle herself waiting for that one. But at the moment, it's been all Dominguez Hills. Uh, Jacob, do you think we're going to see a turnaround here on map three? I, I don't. Um, I, I, so far, CSU Hill has just been on a, a, a terrific It's quite frankly. They came out. They asserted themselves early. They dominated the first map. Um, and, and, and really more of the same in the second map. They just look locked in. They look like, like they're at a different level tonight. And I know how good this Northern Essex team is. I mean, this is the team that's our defending champion, um, you know, with their same roster. So I, <laughs> I'm, I've been very impressed with the way that CSU DH has played. And looks like they are well on their way to winning back-to-back uh, -to -back titles and consecutive nights here, Jim. You know, it, it feels bad. You know, less than six meters away was Northern Essex there on map number two. Uh, and just couldn't make it. Less yep. than six meters. I could spit that far, Jacob. Come on. It's a lot of information for me to digest at this late hour. But <laughs> That's I, fair. I That's that. fair. I, I respect yeah. that. But I mean, but but right now, I mean, CSU DH just playing really, really well. Um, they're they locked are. in. They're, the, they're, they're their top seed for a reason, let's be honest. Um, and, and, and they're, you know, I'm not saying the Northern Essex can't come back and do this because I can. And, and they've, they're a champion. Um, and, and, and they will regroup. Um, you know, I think this is a very good opportunity for them discuss some things internally, sort of catch your breath, say, all right, we've been knocked on our heels a little bit. Let's see what we're made of. Um, are we going to roll over and call it a night? Or are we going to, are we going to fight back, punch back and win this third map and make this a series? And that's what we'll see. You know, we talk about it all the time, the mental, and it's yep. something that a lot of people don't think about, but the mental is so big in games like this, especially you're down 2-0. You know, just have to come back, have to get yourself in that right headspace just to be able to do what you have to do. To, I think, and, it, sorry, Jim. I, I I think that the mental at this level is the different. I think everybody physical skill wise is pretty pretty similar. Um, I, I think it's how you respond, how you communicate. Um, you know, probably minor tweaks and adjustments in game, but you know that mental aspect is 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 the difference because everybody's at a comparable level. Um, in this in these divisions. Um, and and that's the difference. How do you do those little things like the mental aspect of the game? That's the difference a lot of times between a win and a loss. Quite simple. And that it is, and that's it. but that's what it's going to have to be right here. Uh, Northern, Northern, they're going to have to come back. They're going to have to have that mental. Mental. They're going to have to come out at some we talked about earlier. Bully the bully. You got to come out and you got to throw your best punch right off the bat. You got to take a little bit of the momentum back, and then you got to try to ride that that yeah, that momentum as far as it'll take you. I'm tripping on myself here. You can tell we've been here quite a while at the desk, uh, Mr. Producer. How much longer we got? All righty. So about a minute left. Uh, nobody really asking any fun questions in Twitch chat. I blame you for that Twitch chat. Ask better questions. You'll get better answers. Uh, <laughs> but no. Uh, so do you, do you think it's the sweep, Jacob? You think it's the full sweep? No, or do you think, no you think I, Essex don't. Takes I, one? I don't. I don't. I, I think Northern Essex will, will, will get one here. Um, I, I don't think this is over, quite frankly. I think Northern Essex can come back. Um, but I think you're right. They need to assert themselves. They need to get some confidence in this third map and, 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 and begin to say, hey, we belong. 
we're good enough to compete tonight. Because so far, especially in that first map, I just thought CSU DH came out like a like a heavyweight fighter throwing haymakers, and they landed. And and that can knock you on your feet, especially a Northern Essex team that the only other tournament run in the NACC they're used to, they ran through and they won. So I, now the challenge is on them to punch. There we go. Uh, I I think it might. I think they might take two. I think this might want to go four to two. I'm thinking four to two is what it's going to go. But then again, if I say four to two, I never said who I thought was going to win. <laughs> so, Mister uh, Mister Producer of Souls, we're good to go. So we're going to go back to Infernosis and Unicorn for the call for map number three. Well, welcome back, everybody. My name's Infernos, is joined here by a not-so-rare unicorn. I mean, he didn't miss last week, I built, if I remember correctly, and it was unfortunate. I missed you. I don't think very many too, others dude. did, but I oh, definitely did. All right. so. oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Started off good. About five in, I'm bringing our banter higher, but it, it always hurts to, to make a jab at you because I never mean any of them. <laughs> Oh my goodness, but a 2-0 quick victory right now for the Dominguez Hill side, the CSUDH side. Northern Essex just haven't found an answer, and this may be another two, a quick 2-0 to make it that 4-0 in this best of seven. Yeah, and we're hoping it's not a quick 4-0 here, right? You see that we're headed to Volskaya Industries, Northern Essex map pick. Hopefully, that's on the back of some VOD reviews. It's on the back of some sort of study saying, hey, CSUDH looking really strong, maybe not looking as strong on Volskaya Industries. Or is it a strength pick for Northern Essex? Either way, hope to get best of both worlds, and it'd be both of those things. We'll have to see if they can continue to attempt to contest CSUDH, who has been dominant so far. Eichenwald looked pretty good uh, for the side of the defense from uh, from Northern Essex, but the attack was felled pretty quickly there. Was able to get to that third point, not quite able to cap. A lot closer than we saw from Oasis. Maybe they're kind of picking it up and learning as we go. We'll have to see. I think Freaky J on that far, it can be an answer. They definitely seem to be having trouble dealing with that, but it's the rest of the team staying safe while that off-angle damage comes through from that far. If I remember correctly, Northern Essex had to reverse sweep in the semifinals to even make it here. So it's a pretty big thing for them. So maybe sure. we see the attempted reverse sweep here. I mean, it is a best of seven, so they can lose three back to back before reaching their their point. Maybe they just need the the pressure on their back. Maybe they need the weight on their shoulders. Well, they've got the weight of the world. They've got the weight of this division, the weight of the NECC for the Northern Essex side on their shoulders. And it's going to be a tough one to say the least because CSUDH is a team that is a force to be reckoned with. They are, by all means, insanely strong. But uh, Voskaya, we've already seen it once today. And it was pretty interesting to behold. It did come down to, I think we saw second point was somehow easier to cap than first point, which is not usually how it's supposed to go. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely not. And I think to go back to what you were saying, it's important to to kind of be that underdog in the series because you kind of get all the momentum and all the morale, not the momentum, excuse me, but the morale from the previous teams in your favor, right? Like if I if I get fourth place, I'd rather see the second place underdog take out the team that absolutely dominated my division, right? I think you want to see We've mentioned it a bunch of times that David and Goliath story, you want to see it come to fruition, right? You want to see CSU, CSUDH fall to Northern Essex if you're all those other teams that got absolutely steamrolled by CSUDH throughout the regular and then a portion of the postseason. Can Northern Essex do that? Can they ride off the high that was that semifinals win in that reverse sweep? We'll have to see here. They go up to defend and they decide in Fernosis to go with the double main healers with Carol on the Ana, Zara on the Baptiste. Is it going to be enough to deal with Girthquake on this Widow? It's going to be interesting. Obviously, I like to see the Widowmaker, but I do like to see the double sniper comp coming out from Northern Essex. They brought out Hanzo. They brought out Ashen. Now they've managed to go trade for trade. Metal does find Osiris, and it's going to be a rebrack as Metal's going to be brought back to the fight, but Mame Sheba taken out by Tilted, and so now a little bit of a regroup kind of has to come forward for this Dominguez Hill side. It looks to be that Northern Essex is just going to continue to swing forward quite physically as Kermie collects three, and 
Freaky gets a nice headshot kill with a Storm Arrow to Danny. They'll shut that down, and I want to take a note here. We do, in fact, see Dominguez Hills once again trading out those three players. They're going to bring back Tilted. They're going to bring back Ooh. a Freaky J. Oh, no, it was a Cyrus, and they're going to bring back Zara, if I'm correct. Yep. I, my brain and Danny comes back. There. And Danny, yes. Yep. Danny comes back as well, and I think that's what makes it hard to prepare for a team like this, right? Is you don't know what players you're playing against for each map. You come in, and all of a sudden there's three subs here, two subs there, and you find yourself having to prep for a total of nine, ten players. That definitely makes mm -hmm. it infinitely more difficult. Ooh, a shatter does come through. This is coming from Kermy. They managed to collect a lot of kills, so they got the charge pretty quickly. But Immortality Fields traded out. Freaky J finds Danny on the first pick for this fight. But now Kermy's shield is out, and Mame Sheba has free reign. They'll drop the shatter as well. It only finds one because Tilted is able to block most of it. But Osiris finds two as an ash. Tilted cleans up to 3D Hizzy, and Osiris finds Girthquake. It seems to be the snipers for this Northern Essex side, just finding more success than this Dominguez Hillside can manage to muster up from their their attempts yeah and you know i feel like i'm repeating myself because we've had a very long series behind us but a lot of new people here and we talk about the ult economy in these two cp maps if you can win that first fight that leans the ult economy and the rest of the w's in these team fights in your favor for the entirety of the defense definitely makes it harder when osiris does fall to that earthquake headshot but look at all the ultimates they have here comes the grab dragon combo someone's got to kill immortality kermy is able to do that and very quickly you see them dump a lot of ultimates but they do come out with a team fight victory. And what did that team fight earn them in Phrenosis? It got them an Earth Shatter and an Amplification Matrix. Now, all of a sudden, they're geared up to win the next fight as well. Yeah, they managed to stack her Night Fury as well. She took yeah, that was a dive up. exceedingly late. That's going to yeah. be a lot of time bought. A very nice job from Northern Essex to do so. They haven't looked hot the last two maps, but they're looking exceptionally hot right now. And I hope that's not a caster's curse to go through for it, but they have managed to hold out. You can have the amplification matrix come from mm. both sides. A grab does come out from 3D Hizzy. Kermy does get a fire strike kill to Danny, but a shatter attempted. Kermy will fall before they're able to because E-Meadow managing to pick up two into Carol and Kermy. And now they're trying to take a step back, but it does seem to be that Dominguez Hills has found themselves a little bit of success and are continuing to try and act on it. Tilted, just trying to output as much damage as possible. Mame Sheba exceedingly low, but now being supported freaky j solo targeting out the opposing ana of night fury and is just unable to clean up the kill onto her it's exactly who you needed to stay alive there though if you want people contesting for those last few seconds you want it to be that zarya who's building up that graviton surge charge it, it tilted is able to get 85 freaky j was alive as well not quite able to find the uh the hits there with those uh tree logs as arrows as we call them not quite able to connect with anybody only 55 here but they're going to be having a grab ready to go here in just a few seconds to help defend but for the side of main shiba main shiba and friends they have plenty to go as well as this nano's coming up and the visor's ready for danny yeah osiris finding an opening pick in e-metal in this fight may set themselves up to try and steamroll in another direction tilted will drop a graviton surge but a high noon comes out from girthquake could be a little bit more successful but this wall from kermy does deny but now the shield out for the count and we'll have to try and regain that charge but now no one really left to damage now because freaky j is able to collect yet another log kill uh you say timber and he will be felled because of it and it sets them up for another bit of a regroup forced by Dominguez Hills having to take a step back. Haha. <laughs> Not anyway. easy for me to say, apparently. Yeah. Um, good tree joke. Uh, so, you see CSUDH, they have the ults available. They want to walk forward, honestly, pressure shield and shatter, but they need to get this nano visor out. Instead, they throw the nano onto Mame Sheba here. That's going to be plenty to sustain. Kermy finds himself inside of an anti-grenade. Not going to spell, well, wow. Osiris and Kermy find the fire strike combo in that fight. I'm not sure how that ended so quickly with Mame Sheba having as much health and as much sustain as he did, but Osiris found the picks into the right spot. I guess put Bob in the perfect corner and that was cleaned up very quickly. Yeah, I mean, obviously right at this point in time, you've got to worry about getting staggered. And Dominguez Hills, they've got two minutes. They've got a couple fights, maybe two, maybe three fights ahead of them to work with. If they die quickly, it can be four, but they're able to get to the objective, finally able to tap and get some contestant off, but a nice anti comes through. Kano's able to tag out Mame Shiba now a little bit low, but an amplification matrix will allow for the assistance to go through. Tilted has a long shot with a right click, but Danny has a side angle as well. They're putting a lot of positional advantages for their side, but Dominguez Hill is just not able to categorize going forward. High Noon does get dropped here. Girthquake from inside pocket to the side. Is now trying to be contested by Kermy. Does find the kill. Freaky J as well goes in that direction. The 3D Hizzy, Gravidon Surge does not find effect with Tilted's will. 
kill, and they'll be able to clean up so much off the back of it. And now they're gonna have to go for another complete regroup, and they're continuing to stagger out Night Fury, who just cannot die early enough in these fights. Yeah, definitely doesn't seem like she's falling very quickly here. Uh, needs to die faster, at least jump off the map in a situation like this, but you'll see, it, at least in my opinion, especially in Challenger's Division, with a minute left, I already personally think this is last fight territory. I, I don't think that they can clean this up quickly enough. They do have a beat drop from E-Metal to open it up with. You're going to see them transition left side. It's going to take them out of that line of sight from that hit scan until they're forced to face it. But Kermy wants to immediately find his way in there. They're going to beat drop forward instead. Try and walk forward here. Kermy's in trouble. Needs to get sustained. Can't lose line of sight like that. Going to get booped back by the enemy Reinhardt of Main Shiva. Still with a shatter to his name. He's going to pin forward, take control of this objective. Freaky Jane's able to pick up one. It might just be a Constellation kill. They're now trying to get E-Metal, and they will be able to stun, but not be able to complete the kill, though. Right at Lucio doing what it does best, and I don't think they're going to make it back. There's no chance. The charge gets shattered down, but they will be able to touch off of Zara, and now it's a literal micrometer away. You do see Danny's visor come through. Maybe she was able to knock Kermi off, but they also fell off the map as well. They're being able to contest. Tilted is just spinning to win, and that might be what you need. It's not a gamble here. They're taking it all in stride. Another high noon comes from Freaky J, they're able to get some tag damage off. It doesn't manage to kill anyone in the process, and they will be able to step. No, wait, did they step off? They did. Yep, they did. It just got C9. Oh. Wow. And that was off the back of, I'm not going to lie to you, a horrible decision from Mame Shiba. He took Kermi off the map as the Reinhardt when the spawn advantage for the defensive side, I mean, the door is right there. It's definitely in favor for Kermi to get pinned, pinned off and take Mame Shiba with him. Instead, uh, what looked like it was going to go back into the side, into the favor of Northern Essex, they see 9 it, and in overtime, CSUDH are able to scrape by luck alone two points here on Volskaya, and now they'll get to defend and hopefully try and avoid the same tragedy. Yeah, I mean, they had no time, so it did go down, and there, there's nothing extra to work on, but at, at this point in time, there's going to have to be a, a problem that needs answering. Whose fault is it? Uh, I don't necessarily you can blame any individual person. I think Northern Essex just had their I hands I blame full. you. You blame me? That's actually probably a good call. I mean, apparently, Chad doesn't have game volume, so um, we just weren't making the right audio noises. They didn't hear the footsteps on the objective. They just didn't have any audio. We, yeah, we weren't making the footstep noises. Yeah, well, my beatbox class is uh, just not coming to fruition here. You taking a beatboxing class? Oh, no. <laughs> no. I do underwater basket relay. That's what I do instead. So. Underwater basket relay. Relay? Weaving. 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 Oh, yeah. oh. I thought like underwater basketball, you know? No, that'd be cool actually. You think they have what any of that on Volskaya? The ice water? Probably pretty cold, you know? Yeah, I mean, it Earthquake, would be, it that would was be a ice. nutty one clip. That was actually a crazy one clip. That was just clean by Earthquake there. That brings still has up over 20%, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that, that is a massive ult charge boon right at the start of the round. And a second. Uh, he's okay. fragging out. <laughs> I mean, he's I. Not it's, it's so impossible to be able to figure out what Gurkwake's even doing. They just cannot deny it. Now at 55%, it's just already climbing up to the 60% margin. Nobody else is anywhere close. Carol is climbing slowly up to try and match, but that's a support who is in desperation, dire straits to try and get their team healed up to fight it off. But Gurkwake is now at that 80% margin. Danny will be taking out any mortality kill from Zara, but now you've got 3D Hissing sitting inside of their own. That's Night Fury. She's dropped theirs off. Now running out of time. Mame Shiba needs healing to support, but a full charge tilted. We're able to help and support. Gurkwake does get Pulse Bomb first, and Freaky Nano, J will pay it. the price accordingly. Do it. Nano Kermi. Nano Kermi. Yes, that's a huge Nano. Gets it before E-Metal does. That should be enough to frag forward onto Mame Shiba. It absolutely is. Carol saves the day. Builds up the Nano... The, the, the nano fast and ends up throwing it onto Kermy. That should be enough to close this point out. But Danny's ready with that visor. Not able to find any picks as of yet, though. Barely staying alive. Tilted now has grabbed to maybe try and assist. Night Fear will try to jump up, but will just become a skeet shooter, the old duck hunt. And they'll be cleaned up accordingly. And like you said, when Carol's boost to go on to Kermy, Kermy getting that shatter first, maybe she was just not able to do the same level of contestion, was forced to kind of take a step back. You saw the Night Fury had used the Immortality Phil to assist both 3D Hizzy and Mame Shiba, and they weren't able to brawl like they initially had wanted to, and Kermy was, which then gave them the charge. I like your cat behind you, just one. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, um... 
yeah, Carol being able to find that nano boost is what turned that around. Now Kermi instead finds himself an anti Osiris as well. Gonna need to be sustained before Girthquake finds him. Finds the recall. Someone needs to get Osiris some heals here. Is it gonna fall? They're all turning for this tracer. Girthquake finally falls. They're gonna be able to push in here, but Girthquake's gonna be back gonna be back so quickly that I'm not sure it's gonna matter too much. Already spawned here is Girthquake gonna come in a huge anti from Carol onto the side of 3D Hizzy that does end up taking down that self-destruct ready diva and now Kermie's gonna brawl forward and this is looking like a great attack for Northern Essex and Phrenosis. Yeah a massive anti through and through and it was able to find much success. Carol now boosting onto Kermie. Kermie's able to just stay on site and swing. The spawns will favor the defenders but at this point in time when you've got so much ults to go off of and play with you can go. Zara narrowly getting back into the safety of the shield of Kermie but Kermie's been anti to high noon dropping out now. It'll be Freaky J finding main Sheba who Attempted to charge on a site and cannot survive. It is just moments away, but a blade comes out from Osiris to try and finish this and make it a done deal. Danny sprinting on. You've got assistance from Girthquake, and they'll be able to take Freaky J, but they're forced to recall, and they're going to have to hop off slowly but surely. 3D Hizzy to a Hammonds, and now Shatter for Shatter. Mame Sheba finds Kermie and a few under the stun, but it does not look like Northern Essex wants to hop off this. They're still winning every engagement. They are winning the engagements, and it's just last-ditch efforts for the side of CSUDH, and 3 minutes and 31 seconds on the clock means that this is no longer winnable from CSUDH. We have officially, no matter what, found ourselves in at least a Game 5. Uh, at best, Northern Essex is able to take this with the 3, th three minute and 30 second time bake. They want to find their first tick here, or they draw it and we go to map 5 no matter what. At least Northern Essex is able to answer some of what CSUDH is doing, and they're geared up, geared up now to take this 2CP map from them pretty definitively. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not this Northern Essex squad has what it takes to, to dethrone Dominguez Hills. I mean, there's a reason they're first seed, and they're definitely making them now have a run for their money on this map. It didn't necessarily look that way in the last two, but when you watch this one through and through, it, it definitely is Northern Essex that's taking a very substantial lead in the scoreline shows it they've got three and a half minutes to work with they don't got to do much with it they handled it before they just got to let carol get the boost onto kermy let kermy charge and get that brawl a little bit more substantiated before mama shiba can and then act off of it and just proceed to snowball through this dominguez hill defense yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult as far as an attack is concerned. They've got the double hit scan on both sides. However, Girthquake and Danny kind of naturally have that staging formation where they can choose where they hold as that hit scan. Makes it harder for Freaky J and Osiris to find those line of sights as long as Girthquake and Danny don't allow for them to. They've got to overextend through that choke just to get into those hit scan duels. I think instead they pressure that shield, really enable Kermi by putting a lot of pressure onto Mame Shiba and the shield that he's holding up right as right truck here and instead it looks like they'll opt to go top right like to see them do it with once again a lucio but that double main healer comp has worked out for them so far yeah an unfortunate positioning freaky j and osiris are going to take a lot of damage as they cross through which will allow for zara and carol to get their charge up but it also charges the opponent's damage as well so they're going to now drop back to the low ground they'll have two situated up high typically your ash player to gain sights freaky j's got a flank a stun they'll find the first clean kill with the earthquake kermy gets a nice fire strike and a cleanup kill to 3d his and main shiva and this is going to be northern essex they've managed to swing through just metal and they will not be made of metal just paper as they get torn straight through and northern Northern Essex will in fact take this map three. Northern Essex proving that CSUDH is in fact mortal and they can not only win a map but they can do it decidedly as they prove on Volskaya. I think we might have another Infernosis series on our hands. We very well might. And uh, I, I mentioned that last night and I got yelled at by the Observer because it was 3 a.m. So <laughs> while uh, unfortunate for our next line of casters that <laughs> they have to go until 3 a.m. 3 a.m. as well, we might have another series. So we get to enjoy that. And they've got to wait their, their turn and watch the next one. And that one could be a series as well. Let's go Absolutely. ahead and jinx it for them so that they get full time Let's in. This is the playoffs. They've all earned their way to get here. It would be a shock for it not to be a series. For sure. And I, I think once again, when you come up against these one and two seeded teams who have throughout the entire season shown that not only do they have the resources and tools to take out all these other super talented teams, but they can do it decidedly against each other. They can bring those skills to the table, determine what what is the best counter to these different compositions that these super high-seeded teams run? 
play their subs accordingly, or if you're the side of the side of Northern Essex, keep the six that you have, roll with it, and know that you're going to be what it takes to take down the absolute Goliath that has been CSUDH so far, proving that they're mortal, proving that they can be taken down, especially on a high logistics and strategy oriented map that is 2CP, especially Volskaya Industries. Now, I believe we're heading to what? Escort next? Yep, we'll if go to correctly. Escort now. Yep. So we may see Rialto again. We may see. Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. I love Rialto. Rialto's a yeah, very fun map. Big fan. Uh, big fan. Big, huge. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of really good escort maps. There's a lot of fun to be had on them, but I guess it really comes down to what Dominguez Hills is uncomfortable with and what they're comfortable with. And we don't have that information. We don't got the round fight differential to go off of, but we just can make it up. off of that. All right. So I'm, I'm foreseeing at least. Between 1% and 99% of their fights are won on Rialto. So a good chance they go to Rialto. Sorry, I was waiting for production. I just heard that that's wrong. That's not correct, actually. Oh, okay. Um, they have oh, are, you on a different, are, you a different, are you on a different tempo than mine? Like, oh, you don't, have, you don't have this one? You don't oh, have... yeah, sorry. I, my right ear is a little deaf. Yeah, so, you yeah, have to pay. It's caster premium. You have to pay for it. It's like yeah, nine, 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 nine month. It's worth it, though. It's worth it. <laughs> um, so... I think when we jump into this escort map, North Stop that. Northern Essex has to look at this escort and know that hey. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay. <sighs> Northern Essex knows that what they've gotta do is ride this momentum and continue to push forward on either of these double hit scans or I'm still an advocate for Freaky J on the Farah. Somehow mm. they're making this double main healer comp work. I think running Ryan period is difficult without a Lucio, but I think they find found themselves in a division that's not quite capable of exploiting it and and i don't want to say understanding not to belittle anybody by any means but you know when you when you have rhyme without that lucio it becomes difficult to enable him but if he's not going to be countered effectively then hey by all means it's working right like don't stop doing it now they're flashing dorado pretty sure that's the map that uh that'll be chosen here so maybe the rhyme stops working maybe this is where we start to see some double bubble from this challengers division maybe we see a winston maybe we see a diva i think di i think things can definitely be switched up here but this is also a good map at least on defense to run the rhine sigma as well yeah i hard agree i mean dorado is a very fun map not just for the fact that the little balance at the beginning on the attacker side actually does the Futurama intro. So <laughs> that's always a fun thing about this map. So you know that I always do that every time. But it's a very fun map. A lot of high ground potential. you got to worry about cutting through the gate. You've got to worry about boosting past. Uh, a lot of the times it's a bit of a safety problem. Winston's work exceedingly well. But you kind of need a Ryan when you're attacking to stay safe as you come up that first alley. That alley is exceedingly dangerous. Once you get past it, you can kind of switch it up. You can maybe go for a, a bubble to, to follow suit and, and play Winston again. I love to see Winston's on the last, the third section on the attack because then you can kind of take full control of high ground and you can bully them inside their own spawn with Primal Rage. And it typically does work out, but you're more than likely not going to see uh, a Winston for an entire game if you do see it pulled out. We haven't really seen a Winston from either side, if I remember correctly. It's it's been this this Reinhardt brawl composition. So unless we get some like insider information, I think we should just see a very standard. Maybe we see Orisa be brought out and have some support from a Bastion Orisa Sigma Bastion combo. We had seen that earlier. Maybe we see that come out as well. Maybe we see a Torvir and Pirate Ship. We could see some spice, but it's more than likely just a, a pretty standard Dorado push. Yeah, I think that I think the possibility is definitely there. I I think once you get to to streets phase, if both teams do decide to run a Reinhardt, whatever DPS or potentially a Diva can take control of the high ground. I think we as casters and everyone in chat will very quickly see how how definitively and how one-sided fights become mm. based off of what team can control that high ground. Hence why you run that Winston. Hence why you run that run that Wrecking Ball, that D.Va, whatever you whatever it may be. The reason why is when you're on high ground and the and the rest of the team can't get up to you, it's free reign. And that's where Reinhardt struggles. Hopefully we don't see that come to fruition here. However, whatever team decides to run something other than Reinhardt, I'll call it now as far as predictions are concerned. I think they're going to have a lot of success. Yeah, uh, you know, I would make my prediction, but I'm a little bit too big brain. So uh, oh, gotcha. if I make the prediction, it, it usually comes true, and I don't want to spoil it. I can do like a spoiler alert. If like you can like opt in, should I do that and do like a spoiler? Like you can, can like, you do just one? Can you just tell me? Yeah. Who's... Yeah, I got you. I'll tell so, you what. Tell me what Tilted's gonna play right now. Hurry. I think Tilted's gonna. Gotcha. What was that? Weird. What? Did you not hear that? Did you not hit opt in? 
Did you not opt in for the spoiler? You gotta click no, on it. No, I. It wasn't in the terms and conditions for Caster Premium. I thought oh, it came yeah. with it, but maybe you need. Oh, I'm looking maybe, here. It's an add-on. It's, it's a DLC. It's a DLC. I'll download it's, it after you this. You gotta add it. What is this? EA? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we really we're fired. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, we're not seeing an EA game here anytime. We're not bringing Battlefield. Up. Sponsor. <laughs> Uh, well, I, uh, oh, you did say Zarya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tilted yeah, Zarya. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Wow. Yeah, I mean, impressive. I'm a genius. Yeah. Yeah. Freaky J on the Hanzo. We'll see some grab dragon combos. Osiris goes for the Ash again. No damage boost applied to it. We see the double main heal combo once again from Carol and Zara. Zara, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm going to call it out for a second. Zara, not the best immortality feels that we've seen. They're getting mm. killed quickly. They're not at not at fantastic times but carol is definitely making up for it with the quick nano boost charges that we've seen speaking of nano boost e metal and zero are back at it again with uh with the nano blade that they're going to go for with this combo we'll have to see if it works they've got the mercy paired with it with earthquakes uh with earthquakes Farah, and that eye in the sky may be enough to take down the northern essex defense here but osiris has something to say about it on the hit scale yeah, already a first pick comes through. Freaky J is able to connect to a very eventful kill as well, so the CB raid can't revive their player. And then Osiris, that double sniper is working so exceptionally well for Northern Essex right now. Now third picked up as Osiris will clean to the second. And then that will allow for the rest of the team to just follow suit and pick up the last few stragglers. I mean, E-Metal does take a fire strike to the rear, but it doesn't seem to matter. You don't really... Uh, my, my opinion here is Girthquake on the far has worked. It worked on... I can wall, but I don't necessarily know if it's going to work against this Northern Essex side that's found their stride and rocking a double sniper comp. Yeah, it's difficult because I think the forest serves a different purpose here. I think instead, you're not going for that pure damage, right? You just want to boop the Reinhardt down. And you can see that's exactly what Girthquake goes for right there. It doesn't work out exactly how they plan, but you just want to get Kermy off of that high ground and force him into a brawl he doesn't want to be a part of. And uh, it, that's what needs to happen with these boops. Instead, they're able to push it in for free past the choke. Girthquick does find a kill onto Osiris, not having that mercy. Definitely not working out for them. But on the back end, Mame Sheba falls to Kermi, and it's an all-out brawl from here. The back line's winning on payload. The front line of Northern Essex is winning in their back line. Now they're coming back to point as they, the DPS push for free. It's kind of weird, Infernosis. What is this massive overextension? I, I genuinely think no idea. it's just just kind of tossed this section. I, it, it, it hurts to say that, but yeah, they I... overextended and they... Bad. They're down bad. That is that is the complete opposite you needed. Your tank stepped away and everyone on your team gets swept away because there's no one to cover them. Yeah, that's definitely pretty rough. Speaking of pretty rough, Girthquake is not able to finish the word justice before taken out by Storm Arrow. Seaweed Brain will follow suit and fall down to the ground. And here we go. This is the high ground we were talking about. Let's see. Let's see how right we were in Phrenosis and how on how much this high ground will matter for the side of Northern Essex, as there's no no one with any formidable amount of health to contest this high ground from the side of CSUDH. Yeah, they've, they've got to be able to contest it. You don't have a Winston. You've got a far, which means you can put some high up damage. But when Osiris is getting pocketed, has assistance from Zara, and has been nailing their shots and does just that against Girthquake, that far is not going to amount to much. Zara is solo amplification fielding right now up top. A Baptiste does deal a massive amount of damage, and they're continuing to do so. Getting some good charge, but a shatter from Mame Sheba finds two and a stun. It'll clean up into Carol, but they'll return with a bomb. Osiris is able to tag one, but zero is dragging strike phones Osiris on the refrag this fight goes in both directions but CB Brain revives Enzo and makes it a little bit more one-sidedly in favor of this Dominguez Hills yeah looking good for Dominguez Hills right now off the back of that huge Mame Shiva shatter he's going to continue to push forward here doesn't have as, doesn't have as much support as he thinks he does though no healers there to really sustain him maintains the line of sight with E-Metal though and that's going to be important a preemptive nano boost onto Kermi just to make the space to walk forward I suppose but now that, that nano boost is gone he's getting brawled onto and made quick work of by Mame Sheba as Girthquake takes out the back line. Not a good position to be in. Northern Essex have kind of the last few stages, the beginning stages I guess you should say of each of these sections of each of these ticks have worked well. They have they've done a good job of contesting. They've actually won a majority of the fights but then it's the second half 
of these objectives that they're losing. They're, they're getting snowballed, and they don't have the ability to return and becomes a problem, but Tilted with a nice Graviton Surge is not able to make much impact off, but Yumetal gets one anti-nade kill onto Kermie. Revive from Zero Brain makes it difficult for Zero, but Freaky J with two double kills now with that Dragon Strike. They've got a 5k on map of Eichenwald, and now getting a 2k here, but Zero frags right back on their Hanzo, and now you got Northern Essex who are just on the retreat, the back burner, having to escape for their lives. Yeah, and they're going to be able to hold this corner relatively with ease. I I, I want to see Girthquake go around to the left and try and get a flank barrage. However, it looks like he's going to opt to stay with his team for now. Maybe thinking about that left side, definitely where he needs to be on the back of this. He needs to force out that immortality field at the very least. Instead, Zara's going to throw it for free there just to stop the dragons, and that's a huge shatter. Man, Osiris did find Girthquake, but Girthquake revived back. You know that Domingo Sills is wanting that. They faded out the Immortality Field. They had stuns up, and they're wanting Girthquake's barrage to actually Big find Nancy. success. It, they have to go for it, but Mame Sheba finds Kermi. Zara gets Mame Sheba on the refrag. No frontline tanks left now for either side, but a single barrage will make it a little bit more difficult. You have to get tilted now out of mech. And you also have to remove some of that DPS line. They'll be able to do just that in one as Zero finds Freaky J. But their respawn's a little bit quicker than they initially anticipated. And Tilted is about to be demacked. This might be the time where we see Girthquake pop off with a barrage. Yeah, definitely needs to happen soon here. You see him flanking around. Wants to come out onto this payload and just immediately throw it. Instead, throws the Conk Blast onto Freaky J. Just trying to buy time. Throws it at Zara just to finish and confirm a kill. And that by itself should be enough to walk this in after the rest of the front line for CSUDH was able to win that fight on the front line. Probably just need to throw the grab here at something just to stop any any sort of a hold, but not even needed as CSUDH will take it with about two and a half minutes on the clock. And that's a good attack. That that felt relatively snowbally for the entirety of it. They won a first fight and it didn't feel like a an actual clean team fight happened after that first one. Everything felt decently snowball enough to where they were able to take advantage of those staggers and really walk that in. So I, I, I breathe this question towards you because I, I think it's it, it's an interesting talking point. Do you think that teams in this division would be able to climb higher and increase an SR in, in their playstyle if they just learned not to snowball, learned to avoid the snowball? Because that's a big thing you see. A lot of pro teams still kind of struggle with snowball, but the, the good ones of the teams that are, have a lot more coordination and key will know how to not get snowballed and will ultimately find more success because they know when to die, they know when to reset, and they know how to get back quicker. Yeah, I, I think one of the most direct examples I can think of is what we just watched, and hopefully a lot of chat just watched, exactly. is when you talk about you see um when you talk about Santa Cruz and the way that they were able to go back, um, what what's the fight I'm thinking of? Blizzard World Third Point, right? Hmm. So they lose EMF early, and instead they bring they bring Vasok back enough to keep his charge and keep throwing substantial damage in, but not enough to die. Then they throw the Bob in, and that's enough to contest for the time being. So they understand that they've lost the main tank, and then as you mentioned, they supplement that main tank for the time being with a nano boost, and that allows and buys that time to where they can't get snowballed and they can't get staggered backwards because they've dumped enough resources into a fight to end it before it starts and to stall it long enough for that main tank to get back. And I think that's what we kind of see in this challengers division is an attempt of that. When a team loses, you see them start to dial it back to spawn. The communication just oftentimes doesn't seem to be there quickly enough to stop that fight in its tracks and stop any sort of staggers. Man, great positioning right now from Northern Essex to force the high ground to be stepped off. But they'll take an early pick, zero out for the count from Freaky J. And they're looking to continue to kind of contest forward. I mean, the brawl is is kind of being set up. I mean, you've got a difficult position if you're Mame Sheba as you now have no Immortality Field. You're going to have to get pocketed pretty heavily. Kermi has a lot of assistance behind us. Their Immortality Field should be coming up somewhat soon as theirs was the first to be taken out, but now they're going to be able to find a first pick. Kermi swings, finds Mame Sheba. Aggressive stance has to be taken for. They'll drop the damage application. Matrix now looking to continue as this damage is just adding up. Freaky Jaina Enzo, dash coming through as they'll continue the damage. Tilted takes Girthquake. Osiris may have been 
felled, but ultimately it will lead to their team taking this point without having been stopped once. Yeah, it's so interesting too, because you see Northern Essex have such a big fluke defending the first point and then win it so decidedly on attack to where they actually have a higher time bank after that huge slip up there on defense. They walk in with five minutes on the clock moving into street space and look at the way they're immediately able to take high ground. This is exactly what we're talking about, right? They want to be able to hold this for as long as they can. I think they get tilted off the Zarya, add a diva to it, and they're able to hold it for free. I agree, and right now this high ground is being pretty held strong by Dominguez Hills, but when you've got Freaky J, you can drop a Dragon Stack. I would have wanted to see that in a little bit better of a position, but it'll force them off so they can't have a direct overview angle. We'll 99 also make it the grab, that. too. Why not just yeah, combo Yeah, this it? is going to be interesting, because Enzo has theirs coming up as well. You hear a Blade come through, but Earthquake was able to find Carol, so now you're lacking in heals, and that's not a great way to start forward, because now it's only Zara, and that's a difficulty to play. Earthquake capitalizes onto Freaky J. This is where you need to see Northern Essex not commit ults, and just take some steps back because Maim Shiva and the side of Dominguez Hills, they're doing just that, and they're basically guaranteed this fight. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you've got Tilted, you've got Kermi, Carol, all online with ultimates. Zara about halfway through. Play Baptiste halfway correctly, you'll get to the next fight. I mean, crazy how fast you build that window. But for the side of CSUDH, they've got a grab, they've got a shatter of their own. Coming up on Barrage, this is definitely defendable for them as nothing but tank ultimates nowhere close on dps and if earthquake can farm which already at 95 percent since i just talked about him at 70 uh this grab barrage can definitely turn this fight absolutely the push comes through tilted will drop the grab initially enzo will do their own in the process but it looks to be that tilt is a little bit more effective but a shatter comes through they'll trade shatter for shatter it's ult for ult constantly kermy's been boost there from carol and they'll be able to capitalize off a earthquake from behind the barrage finds three and a tilted sword carol that might be a pace changer and all of the ultimates that you wasted and expended for the northern essex side gets immediately destabilized and discounted because earthquake does one single move boops themselves up high and boops your team into an afterlife you forced me to talk about it for so long at the beginning, but that's a tempo ultimate, right? That's what you look for. It's this tide turning ultimate where you wait for the mid fight. You wait for the enemy team to commit resources. You lay back as that Farah, chill on that roof for as long as you can. Then as soon as all the resources are gone, you throw that barrage in and clean it up by itself. It's such a huge play from Girthquake there to stop such a decided attack from Northern Essex. Yeah, and they've already have to get another step forward. They're going to have the amplification field come down, maybe increasing damage, but Girthquake is behind up on the high ground. Zara's going to step up to maybe assist. They may actually be able to frag Girthquake if they're not careful, but Maim Shiva finds one with a nice fire strike, finds a second with a swing to go Cyrus, and Zero has been full sent in with the blade into Carol. Freaky J finds one kill, but then is immediately felled afterwards. Northern Essex had no problem getting the first point, but they're struggling to find this second. You and I talked about the most difficult spot on Rialto for an attacking team, and I think we found ourselves in an equally difficult spot for the attacking side. Instead, on the nighttime Dorado, this last this choke here to push to this tunnel where high ground is such a big issue. Ooh, kinda clean there from Osiris. Uh, where high ground is such a big issue, it's difficult for the attacking side to to really push in without committing all these resources. You'll see them dump now and it might be enough to take it as Kermi will walk forward. Instead, Maim Shiba now has the nano boost. The Osiris High Noon is gonna be walled off from zero though. Yeah, he does manage to find one just barely getting around the edge and Seaweed Brain for some reason popping the amplification matrix. I think a bit of an expended waste <laughs> kind of doesn't make any impact. They die instantly afterward. Maybe we'll see Seaweed switch, but I don't yeah. necessarily think we will. Don't so ever talk trash. A wasted ult. Don't ever tell Not against my boy Seaweed Brain, all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's doing yeah. the Lord's work over here. Yeah, doing my apologies. Best. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't know where it was written in, in was it Overwatch 613 where it says use amplification it. matrix incorrectly? See, if you're just going to say the correct verse, don't act like you didn't know where it was from. Uh, you're you, right, you I'm sorry. Exactly I'm sorry, I apologize. From, don't lie to me, you know? We're all friends here, we can tell the truth to each other. Kermy! Right here, ready to push the first corner. Gets the swings out, forces zero of the ice block out. Girthquake also falls. This is a huge fight, decidedly, for Northern Essex. They throw the, not, I almost said throw the blizzard. They instead throw the amplification matrix from Zara. That's enough to clean it up. They're going to walk this in. Two minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. No one there to touch for CSUDH. Girthquake dies with a barrage and isn't able to come back and contest with it. You've got exactly equal time banks here for both sides as they push into this. Uh, seven seconds discrepancy, whatever. 
Same time. This is uh, this is this is a game, and once again, we'll say it for the fourth time. This is uh, this is looking to be a series, Infernosis, and it's another situation where we screamed Boise State all season. We've screamed we've screamed CSUDH all season. Is this the finals where Northern Essex can take it to this Goliath of a team and say, hey, not not today, man. You've dominated all season, but this trophy's ours. Yeah, I, I think this very well could be. Obviously, you're going to have to try and change things up. You can't use the exact same strategy you used previously. Obviously, for Northern Essex, it didn't work on defense. The overextended. I think they could have held first point for way longer, but the overextension sure. and separation yeah. from the front line to the back line cost them it entirely. And then the snowball came to effect, and that rolled up. And you don't need a man. You don't need a devil to show that the devil's in the details. They're going to snowball out. For this opposing side, though, when you're attacking, you still got to switch it up, change things up. I saw Freaky J for a second there hovering over Doomfist. I think that's a strong idea. We've seen Freaky J previously on Doomfist. They play exceptionally well with it. Honestly, it's hard to find something that doesn't work with Freaky J. They're just very clinically talented. But yeah. when you're facing off against Girthquake, who can play Genji, who can play Ash, who can play so much, and then Zero, who's been a great sub and just playing in for this for this Dominguez Hill side, you got to be able to outfrag them if you want any chance of being able to, to clinically step in and swing the round in your favor. Yeah, Zero actually on the Genji last round and performed exceptionally, uh, especially given the composition he was going up against. That didn't find the Nano Blades like they wanted to, but definitely found value on that Genji. Here, though, you'll see Kermit push in, and they're pretty much gifted the choke as unfortunately Pope could not come fast enough for the side of CSUDH. Brawl will come onto the point as Kermit is slept out by E Metal. See if that turns into anything as the anti is there as well. Zero is able to find a pick on Freaky J. Oh, Zero kind of clean up here on this high ground. This is a bad position to be in. Tilted's just gonna, you know, give him a soul sucker punch into Zero, and that's gonna be the only kill that Northern Essex is going to pick up. and. Uh, I, I, it may just be one that's to help you mentally to say, okay, we, we can kill them. It's fine. But this is actually going to be an opening pick. Freaky finds the kill to Girthquake. I wouldn't be shocked if we see Seaweed Brain revive this back just because it seems like a necessity to have that go through. And they're going to have to make a long return. But Northern Essex looking to step forward. Freaky J with a position trying to get high ground and take some shots in the process. The Storm Airs will be tossed out. Aggressive stance through. Already Northern Essex have to use the Immortality Field, but they're going to be nearing some of their ults. Kermi has the Shatter available. Coming up at 3% for Main she best first, they can't get it off. It's going to be Seaweed Brain using the revive to E Metal, but Main oh. She was out for the count. Curry finds so much, but they can't get away from Zero with a Storm Arrow, but it doesn't seem to matter. They'll have plenty of time. 20 seconds now, they'll make the first point, and now they have to stay on it and contest for the rest of this chance. Kermit finds that Shatter, and that's enough to walk it in, but how did that fight start, Infernosis? It's once again Freaky J finding the dome of E Metal. I mean, immediately finding the forehead of this Ana has opened up so many of these fights, and Freaky J is kind of solo carrying right now. Yeah, it does necessarily oh, another feel like Freaky J is just putting the team on their back. Oh, another one goodness. through Seaweed Brain, paying the price, and Freaky from Look behind finds another. Freaky is feeling themselves right now. They're finding everything they need. Osiris and Dar finding Freaky J. Oh, loses the fight to Girthquake. And now they're going to be feeling the tremors, the aftershock of that one. But they've now managed to bring this fight way closer. They've already gotten to this dreaded corner, the one where we've already seen Northern Essex struggle so much. Oh. But I guess it comes down to the wire. What is really going to happen? And can we see Dominguez Hills use these ultimates, these four ultimates in their pockets, to actually win this next fight? Kirby needs to be up farther right now. He's got to deny that choke. He can't let them outside in this overtime situation. Instead, they're going to get a free walk to payload. Immortality is forced to be used early. That's going to die off before these dragons do. And that should be enough to clean it up. Yeah, that Dragon Strike from Zero, really reminiscent of Freaky's previously, but it's going to be a nice ultimate that comes through from Tilted, saving it for just a second longer. They'll get 2.8 meters away, and that seems to be all she wrote. Northern Essex will not make it to the second pip, but they'll make it 93.36 meters, which is probably about two and a half feet, if I remember correctly, uh, total, because, you know, something along those lines. And the Northern Essex side made it pretty far, but now Dominguez Hills, who had a unstoppable push previously, now has to just replicate what they did prior, and they only have seven seconds longer to do so. Yeah, and I think that's important, right, is that there's not this huge time bank discrepancy. So all Northern Essex has to do is say, hey, this is how long it took us to do an attack. Let's just get one more fight win. All we need is one additional team fight win to take this. Over the course of the two minutes, let's do the exact same thing they did. 
and let's just win one more fight ultimately. And the way Freaky J is playing, that's absolutely possible in Phrenosis. I mean, that fight on the streets phase, he finds an initial pick onto, who was it? I think it was Zero, won the Hanzo duel. Then he cleans up Seaweed Brain with the Storm Arrow, throws the dragon directly onto E-Metal's face, and then finally loses the duel to Enzo and Girthquake. But Freaky J walked them through Streets phase, just put everyone on his back with the uh, the brother of the ninja here on Hanzo. And I, I, I've got to assume he can continue to do it. Uh, he's popping off right now. This is his final series. He wants to take this home for him, and right now he's deserving of it. Yeah, it, this is looking really hot. When you've got Freaky J, he's just putting the team on their back. It's hard to not find at least some level of success. Yeah. You know, Cyrus, this double sniper composition, it, it really is working. You know the Essex just need to get a couple early picks, stagger some of this Dominguez Hill side. And then Dominguez Hills is going to have, you know, face against the Wrath of the Snowball. Northern Essex didn't lose a team fight. They lost one, but they came back full force. Freaky J found an early pick, and they were able to stagger. And that snowball came through because we saw Northern Essex not fall and succumb to their own snowball, and then force the snowball on the other side. But Mame Shiva starting off in a Freaky J. That bodes a very dangerous situation for Northern Essex because they've lost their best player, and they'll be forced to revive it in a dangerous position. Kermi does find Mame Shiva, though. The res comes in for both. However, you get the main tank back up a little bit more important than Freaky J, unless he can find these picks to frag out like we've seen him do. He wants to go around back to his team here and spam through the choke. Knows that Girthquake on that Ash is a very real threat to him over there on that right side high ground. Amplification Matrix is thrown from Zara. That's huge. What that does, Infernosis, is buy enough time for them to sustain, really gather themselves, and make this a one, maybe two fight territory series. Or excuse me, Absolutely. game. Absolutely. This could really come down to a very dangerous situation. Freaky J with a nice storm arrow comes through. A shatter comes through from Kermi. It's going to find so much success. They'll just team kill a full stage wipe. I genuinely feel like it could have been better if they had just let it dimmer out and let one or two live to stagger yep. them even further. But they don't need to. They'll find them all in quick succession. They'll revive Freaky J, hoping that Caroline's resurrection will be back in time for the next. But with five ultimates ready for this Dominguez Hill side. It doesn't necessarily bode well, but Freaky J can keep them off this objective with a Dragon Strike. Yeah, they need a poke phase here. They they gotta let Freaky J stay safe, get this Dragon Strike off, and build ultimates for the rest of them. However, Bob comes out, and the Dragons, the knockup from Bob is enough to take Mame Shiva out inside of the Dragon Strike. That is dangerous. It actually gets two. Osiris finding so much success. Tilda oh. gets one of the Diva Bomb. Freaky J finds a Storm Arrow kill to zero. This might be all she wrote. Girthquake just trying to stay alive. They're contesting the objective, but Seaweed Brain will eat as their brain is splattered from Kermi's hammer, and it doesn't look like they'll touch. Ain E. Northern Essex will be able to find the victory, and they'll tie it at that 2 2 margin. We have a series on our hands here. You know, we're going to be here for a while in Prognosis. And I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that it's these two series here. I'm happy that these are the ones that go for a while. Like you said, we're not biased here. We want the best team to win. We're good friends of Carol. Always hope she has fun in her games, no matter how these series go. And then obviously the Boise State game as well with UCSC. Such a good series to go the long haul. And I'm excited for this one to potentially do the same as we find ourselves into Dorado. Northern Essex take it. And that's that's 2-2. Two, two. It really and truly is. Now, we are going to be jumping right after this map. We're going to be seeing what the next map will be to try and see who can break out of that 2-2 two, two margin of that tiebreaker. But we're going to be heading to a short little break in between, and we will catch you guys real soon after a few short messages. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
And we are back. Northern Essex doing their best to take on CSUDH. Tied up 2-2 right now. And we do have Infernosis taking a quick break. We've been going for like six and a half, seven hours straight, so understandable. In that meantime, while we wait on both teams to get ready, going to talk briefly to one of our head honchos, one of the men in charge, and one of the amazing and skilled people on the production team. Caleb, how are you doing tonight, man? I am starting to get to the point where I'm a little bit of exhausted, but we're doing good. We're getting in there, and it's just amazing to see how well these teams are playing today and what the level they're playing at. Absolutely, and and through this level of play, kind of walk me through behind the, the the scenes of how all these games go. What does it look like for production, getting all these teams organized, trying to run different things like that, and still being so invested in these teams' well beings and how each of them do? Do you Good find uh, do you find yourself kind of grasping at straws for the next answer? Or is it very a, a, a tight ship that you're running here? It is slightly reactionary, but I've got to say I've got some of the best staff working with me today on just making sure that we're coordinated in a whole bunch of different areas and making sure that casters are coordinated, making sure that we're going to the panel quickly, going to the next game quickly, bans, picks, all that kind of stuff is going quickly. And you see that game to game, it's it's a different type of uh, reaction, but it's definitely a reaction that, especially today, has just been, okay, how do we deal with this problem? How do we deal with this problem? And it's not like it's, oh, we're jumping at the wheels to find the new answer. It's, here's what we know. Here's what we've done in the past. Here's how we react to this question, and let's react as fast as we possibly can. I think similar to how Infernosis and I describe Overwatch, it's very wave-based, a very dynamic ebb and flow that you're able to handle not only gracefully, but consistently. Um, Caleb, we always appreciate having you. You're always welcome to hop on with me at any time. I miss doing some casts with you. Only got to do a couple uh, before you headed over to production. But I've got Infernosis back. We're heading over to Ilios. Um, one more quick shout-out to Caleb, Jacob, Noah, everyone behind the scenes working as hard as they do. Welcome back, Infernosis. I felt like I got replaced a little bit there. I, I was gone for just a few short moments, and I come back, and I've been, I've been replaced. And you're just saying, "Oh, I missed you so much." You just, oh, I, uh, you know, I thought I was here to stay. You know, <laughs> yeah. little hurts. Yeah. Well, you know, we talked about on air about like maybe some casters like not making the cut for next season. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear yeah. about Nuke here. It it kind of oh you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> I know well. he's watching, which is why I make that. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. That wasn't how Caleb spelled infernosis, but I'll have to get. With yeah, him it's weird. He might, I think he's a little. I think he's. I think there. he's a little dyslexic. Maybe he That's, does sometimes confuse wow. the team names and mess it up. So, like on. What, what what map was it? It was on. It was the uh, last game. We had mm -hmm. it messed up. It was backwards. He didn't change it. Well, Has this map is Ilios. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about that. Freaky J on the Echo, Osiris on the McCree, and uh, I don't. Let me triple check this time. Yeah, this time no changes for the side of CSUDH. No weird three or four man swaps. This brawl is gonna already get started on point. Freaky J taken out early on this Echo Infernosis. That does not necessarily bode well. Girthquake has been nailing that shot already from the beginning. Zero is able to capitalize as well, and Girthquake will collect their second. And now they'll collect their third onto Carol. This is going to be a narrow escape. I don't believe they're going to let all of them get away. In fact, they won't. Zero will uh, be the hero and find Osiris. But Tilted will actually manage to escape. But take a look at that top right corner. Main Sheba at 40%. Yeah. 3D Hizzy at 47 And Girthquake's already above that 60%. And don't discount Night Fury. She's at 70 That. Amplification Matrix is going to be devastating if they place it through these doors on this objective. Definitely so quick to build in these fights. Girthquake woke up and chose violence today on this McCree. Definitely turn it around from the Dorado that we saw. <clears throat> Excuse me. As they want to move in here once again, Immortality Field thrown just a little bit too early for the side of Northern Essex. I want to see it thrown later to really save a life and bait the enemy team rather than throwing it out just as a precautionary save when instead it's just the opposite of the opposition that ends up baiting you. Yeah, difficult, difficult to kind of, you know, figure out the web and weave of what needs to be done. But Freaky J apparently can't figure out how to wall ride, which is actually a note that we're given Stating that Freaky J sometimes struggles with that, but they haven't struggled with getting kills, but they will struggle with staying alive as they get fell. But a nasty shatter hits three. Immortality Field will save for a narrow moment, but Kermi manages to knock Maim Sheba off, and Maim Sheba went for the shatter to try to keep themselves up and will not be able to do so. 3D Hizzy's ultimate, the bomb, will get Carol, but it doesn't seem to matter at this point. Pretty handily now in favor of the North 
<laughs> Sorry. It's going to be in favor of the NECC, but it's a problem now because you've now staggered Kermy. Yeah. It's not a position to be in. No, it's definitely not. And especially when E-Metal and friends have that Lucio of his to get back. Now Kermy's not here. The Blizzard's going to come out preemptively. That's going to be enough to wrap this up. That one death of Kermy ends up losing this entire fight for the side of Northern Essex. And they're only able to keep about 20% of this. That's where those slight overextensions can get you in trouble. You want to frag out. You want to stagger Earthquake. I totally understand that. You've got to make sure you're healthy enough to go forward in the first place. Or else you wind up in this exact situation. Yeah, you can't let yourself be fell of that well, and it's that stagger problem we've seen consistently. They overextend. We saw it on, on the beginning point of point one of the last map. We saw them overextend, and then their backline was capitalized on and became a problem. But a nice Graviton surge does come through. Growthquake has popped the High Noon and hoping to assist, and an amplification Matrix will be dropped as well from Night Fury. Mam Sheba finds a Fire Strike, kills a Tilted, but Osiris returns now with their own High Noon. Can't get it off to get a kill, but Growthquake finds the Freaky J player who switched to Fara. Kills mostly Red in the feed, and it looks like Dominguez Hills will be able to capitalize and clean up the last few remaining players and finish this round off strong. Man, I, I, I don't want to harp on him too much because he's played so well. Kermy's got to be feeling it, Infernosis, after that. I, I I hate to be the bearer of bad news. He lost them that round. And um, I think that that's the awareness and the acceptance you've got to have in a situation like this to really turn it around. They need to reel Kermy in because that overextension alone just cost them... Um, what was that? Lighthouse that we just played. Now, we find ourselves on well, and... Once again, if they can reel him in, back to double main support, it looks like. So won't have the Lucio. So maybe he won't want to walk forward as much as you might be tempted to with that speed boost. But if they can keep Kermy up, if they can get these Grab Dragon combos, I think NECC can turn this around against CSUDH, who looked very strong just now on Lighthouse. Yeah, and right now this is going to be a time. We cracked jokes previously. Last time we got to see this Northern Essex side play, we had stated we wanted to see two or three environmental kills from Carol. They got none, so you know it, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna put it out there because they're playing on and now. It's not likely whatsoever. I just don't think it's going to happen, and it shouldn't unless they get a sleep room over the top. But Kermy finds the first pick in a night three in a second on a Maim Shiva. Now a support and a tank down. Even if there was a Mercy to revive, it would be interesting which one they would try to pick up. But they're just going to re-step, take a staggered position. e metal will be felled in the process. It looks to be that Girthquake's trying to maybe pick up one and get Caro, but it doesn't work out for them. But they also don't lose their life in the process. So a, a fairly substantial trade, but Osiris at 60% of their ult and Kermy and Zara at 70 to 80. This is looking very well for to see Northern Essex come through with the ults first. Yeah, they're able to stage defensively here on well, and you, you see how Maim Sheep is forced to walk around the corner and take that anti right to the face if he wants to push. That Shatter does end up hitting 3D Hizzy, but the D-Mech comes in immediately after. So really, Baby Diva just gets to walk away for free. A little bit of a strange amplification matrix there, but it's, done, it's enough to buy some time for now as Kirby's going to want to build up toward another Shatter. Yeah, at this point in time, just trying to get the rest of your team to get some ultimates. You see Carol's going to go ahead with the ultimate and boost up Kermy as they're going to take a step forward. Kermy will find 3D Hizzy over the step. The Remac does not deal enough damage to kill. It doesn't deal a thousand like it did for that April Fool's update, but it still does a pretty good amount of damage now. But it's just going to instantly get healed. Nothing to ever worry about. And now we're at a 50% to zero on this objective. Yeah, and Northern Essex still needs a poke phase here. They're not ready to take this next fight. All they have is a high noon. They need to build this last 20% to both this grab and this dragon. If they want a good look at this next fight, you'll see Girthquake coming and find two. Both supports as well for Northern Essex. Girthquake does fall, but Zero finds Kermy, and this is definitely all she wrote for now for the side of Northern Essex on well. They'll take 70%, but will fall immediately after to some very clean DPS ultimates from CSUDH. Yeah, Dominguez Hill's taking a very nice margin now. It does get just short of that 75% for Northern Essex, but they're going to have the Dragon Strike. They're going to have a Graviton Surge. Kermy's ultimate is going to be ready as well for a nice Shatter. But if you look at the opposing side, you're going to have a Diva Bomb. You're going to have a Shatter. And then easily can just boost up, drop the beat, 
and increase that damage across the board. A, a Graviton Surge does get dropped from Tilted with a combination, of course, with the Dragon Strike. The Immortality Field will be able to save their lives just ever so slightly. But 3D Hissy wow. drops in the bomb, finds one, knocks Freaky J out, and kills Zara off with the bomb. There's not much they can do. A regroup must come through for Northern SX. I said it last time, Infernosis. I said it last series. Um, as a coach, I'm going to put this as elo eloquently as I can. Immortality Field is kind of stupid. It uh, just saved the entirety of CSUDH from falling to that Grav Dragon as well as a beat drop from the side of E-Metal. That Immortality Field lived forever and ended up with picks for the side of CSUDH. And now they're geared up to find the 70% just as easily as Northern Essex did. Yeah, already a shadow comes through. Kermit able to connect. It does a lot, and they'll charge Mame Shiva bit to a wall and charge them into an afterlife. But Clean. Nero is able to save it slightly with a pulse bomb into Zara Freaky J on the Torbjorn. Not the first time we've seen that tonight. Now, is it? And they'll be able to find their own, and this turret is continuing to do the dirty work necessary. That seventh man on the field for Northern Essex. Yeah, I think the turret from Freaky J here, excuse me, the Torbjorn from Freaky J here is really to just put put a uh, put a sort of a leash on Zero and force him to really choose some different line of sights and change the entire playstyle of this Tracer. Now you've got to be more frontline associated, right? Or frontline oriented. In fact, he'll immediately switch on to Hanzo. Doesn't want anything to do with that turret on that Tracer. Grab will come out and early immortality field for the side of CSUDH. Nothing really as far as follow-up is concerned, but the picks will come immediately after that grab. Northern Essex look like, yeah, they'll definitely take well here as only uh only zero is able to touch and he's just looking for some picks does find the head of carol but doesn't find his feet on the point as northern essex will take it 100 to 71 on well and we're going to be looking at ruins here one to one yeah i mean this is kind of a big one as well i mean we're, we're tied right if i remember correctly my brain is kind of in shambles as of yep, the current two to two. Yeah. we gotta what these teams gotta keep going one team can either take the next two and end it all, or we're going to continue to go through this amazing series and continue to see these teams play it out in the way that they are. But Northern Essex, they kind of got, I don't want to say one-sidedly stomped on, but Dominguez Hills did not give them an easy first round for this. They didn't play it well. They managed to take well, and they took played that well enough to take it. But now uh, they're going to have to play this. It's going, don't hum me. <laughs> You sound like the baby. I know you don't even know who that is. Like, <laughs> I actually don't think I do. I'm gonna be honest. Oh, I know you don't. Yeah. <laughs> but they, anyway. they're going to have to play this, and they're going to have to find success. Either side, it's a make it or break it. It is that match point for this map. It, it could go either way, but if Freaky J gets fragged out a little bit too many times, and Osiris isn't able to pick him up, it'll be a DPS differential. I have never seen this on a BAP combo run so religiously from both of these teams. Once they get an early immortality for from Zara, really want to see those toned down and be a little bit more risky with them. I think you can afford to. Zero does find Carol. Girthquake on a Freaky J. Those are huge picks for the side of CSUDH here. They should be able to move in for free. A big pin there. A huge shatter, but Kermi does fall. Is it enough? I, I'm not too sure. It does deal a lot of damage and concusses so many Zara and Tilted find their own, but Night Fury and Girthquake seem to do the DPS of three. Tilted is the last person standing with a with little a bit of support. casual 3v1. Chain. It's really an interesting position. Tilted does find Night Fury, but a Storm Arrow from Zero will take them in return. And Freaky J, who is just ever so slowly tagging in, stepping in to deal a little bit of damage in the process, is going to be able to secure and save it. Northern Essex narrowly avoiding a uh, confrontational dispute with Dominguez Hills. That could have gone either way. Look at how uh, look at how important the pick onto Carol was. Zero, 95% to a dragon. E Metal already has the nano boost, and Carol's only 60% of the way there. Carol not being there for that first fight has allowed them to get a nano, almost uh, double. Um, what's what's the right wordish for that? Double the time. Anyway, there's a grab. Talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, there is a grab, and immediately followed through with the Dragon Strike seems to be that Dominguez Hills is just going to sweep this next fight. Not much that the Northern Essex sides can do. So, double, double, double one, double it, one. Twice as quickly. I wouldn't use the word twice double. I would say twice as quickly. Yeah, uh, that was just stupid of me, right? Okay. Why would I ever say double there? I would just say twice as quickly. Yeah, that that double kill? Was it a double kill? I mean, yeah, that's Halo. Um, anyway, so, uh, look at me. Don't do that. 
Uh, oh wait, they can't see us anymore. I can't say look at me. It's not as funny. <laughs> All right, Osiris is gonna clean up. Oh, that's Mame Sheba getting picked. That's huge. This time, Immortality Field's not thrown quickly enough. Mame Sheba falls, and now Zara's the one to clean it up. These antis onto Kermi are definitely dealing a lot of damage and definitely putting him at risk, but the rest of Northern Essex is just cleaning up in the back line, and you'll see E, Metal, and Night Fury try and retreat as quickly as possible as Mame Sheba does make his way back, but he'll immediately be forced back to this initial choke, and now we do have double support ultimates online for Northern Essex. I've got to assume both of those go in an effort to sustain Kermi and find some fire strike kills. Osiris has a high noon. I'd like to see him go far right and play Mega with this, deny that line of sight, but they'll throw Zara's Amplification Matrix early. Another huge anti in Phrenosis. Yeah, and that's going to allow Kermi to charge in, find Mame Shiva, and then find 3D Hizzy. Both tanks, the front line for this Dominguez Hill side, in shambles, shredded, completely decimated. Oh, wow. I mean, we got a lot of words we Not can come up for. close on this one. I mean, this, this was pretty one-sided. Northern wow. Ethics will take that in a phenomenal fashion, cleaning up spectacularly. Uh, maybe they just needed, they needed to, I mean, last in the semifinals, they reverse sweeped. Maybe they just needed to reverse sweep Ilios. Right? It, it's 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 weird, and we'll we'll showcase Kermi here uh, for a second. Then we'll talk about it. But hey, this this was that shatter. This was a big shatter. Will they and knock I think Mame Shiba tries to go for the shatter here, but gets pinned. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that was what I was talking about. Knocks him right off the map. They went for the shatter, and they just go all the way down below into the drink. Nothing they can do about it. I mean, that was. Uh... Uh, Pin is a weird ability, huh? <laughs> it's got some weird interactions with it. Reinhardt might be one of the most broken heroes, and I don't mean like overpowered. I mean just actually yeah, broken. Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. It, it, I want Ryan just... to have 20 HP, but the oh, shield has okay. 3,000 HP. So that's actually that could be a good April Fool's joke. Like make the shield 360. Like yeah, it, it's just all the a, way around it's him. Just Give a him bubble health. that moves. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? He gets. He, he's literally one punchable. And he just has, like, a, a nearly invulnerable shield. But he can't cap point. He's, like, somber when invis. You can't cap point. You can't contest any weight. All you can do is hold right click. This just seems like a nerf. I don't like the idea anymore. This just seems <laughs> horrible. You, I think you overdid it. April Fool's right? update. There you go. It's not as anyway. bad as Bastion's old design where he actually had a shield, right? Like That was all the way back in beta. I don't think that yeah. made it alive, did it? I don't think No, it I don't believe so. Um. Anyway... What we talked about, like, I, to go back, and we've kind of harped on it, but, you know, you know, you and I just casted it, and it was such a great series. Boise State versus UCSC, we saw a very different series happen, right? We saw very close, very close, very close all the way through, except for Hollywood, which wasn't at all. But everything else looked like it was neck and neck the whole way. This is a strange back and forth, right? It's like Northern Essex absolutely demolishes CSUDH. And then the next round, it's not even close. CSUDH absolutely destroys Northern Essex. And so it seems like momentum, morale, maybe even the mental fortitude of these players is what's deciding these games to be so uh, be so one-sided. And then as soon as we go to a map, it's immediately the other way around. And actually, now that I say the word map, maybe they're just playing to the strengths that are these map choices. And it seems like if you don't find one of these teams on a map that they prefer, they just kind of fall apart. So maybe that's what we're seeing. I think you I think you definitely could be right. Now, that is hinging a lot on uh, a little bit more of a deeper insight into maybe what the opponent goes into, and that does require a lot of audio review. Uh, mm -hmm. We know the boys who did that, we had gotten the information from them. I really like their stat sheet and see what they kind of go through in their process. Uh, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know what these teams do in preparation. I don't know how much VOD review they do. I don't know how much they look into their own insight. For Rainbow Six, if you're not VOD reviewing your own games, then there's a problem. I VOD review my own casts. Like, sure. yeah. I know nothing about playing the game normally. I'm terrible at the game, but I probably VOD review more than the teams themselves do. And it, you learn so much, and there's so much insight that I can learn, even as a non-player uh, competitively, that is, that you you can gain insights from about each team's their weakness I could tell a team and coach a team how to beat this one team specifically, and they could probably do it statistically speaking because I just have seen the flaws that come through. But the question is, is that team going to have also increased and prepared and done better for themselves to, in, to be a better team and improve, or did they stay stagnant? Because if they stayed stagnant, then it would have been a, a one-sided affair. Thank you for capitalizing the age there, producer. Uh, it would have been a one-sided affair, and it, it's not. It's a series. This is going back and forth. We saw... At the very beginning, Dominguez Hills just immediately taking two, and then 
we got to see Northern Essex would clap back with two more. Northern Essex looks like they're adapting better than Dominguez Hills is. Yeah, I think you hit a good point there, especially in the challengers, challengers division, is it's always so important to be ever improving and to not remain stagnant. I think your goal, especially in a challengers division, is you don't want to be in the division for too long, right? You want to see yourself as a player and your team rise above to, you know, after challengers, go to whatever division you feel is fair, even if it's all the way up to gladiators. You never know. But speaking of fair, speaking of maps that some teams don't favor, I don't think we found either of those as we jump to King's Row here. As teams get ready, looks like they are. We'll jump right in. Scrim's Row, we talked about it. No team's unhappy, right? No team looked at that and said, oh, man, King's Row. I hate this map. Both of them are going to enjoy it. They're going to be able to play the Hanzo of their dreams. I think we see both, who was it, Zero, and I think we see Freaky J both go for the grab dragon combo here on both their respective sides you'll see csudh get to defend first and um on king's row i think that's pretty important on any hybrid map but king's row especially yeah i think that it's pretty common we've seen it a lot in the NECC for the symmetric spawn to go to the top of stature and play We've seen Bastions do that as well. I don't think either of these teams comfortable doing that. We have literally not even seen a Symmetra in this matchup, if I remember correctly. Which is strange, because we've been seeing it all night. You and I have yeah. seen it all night. And that may just be a, diff a difference in comfortability, or maybe a difference in playstyle. But we're going to have to see whether or not this Freaky J player, who's no longer on Hanzo, now playing the Farah, yeah. can kind of withstand the Ash of, of Girthquake and the Soldier of Danny. And we know Danny can hit their shots, and we know Girthquake can hit their shots. This yeah. may need to be a very quick switch from Freaky. The double hit scan going into the far, I think Freaky J will find a very quick switch unless... The only way I think you fix this is if you run a Lucio Mercy, which wouldn't be common, but if you can force your brawl into the front line of CSUDH quickly enough, then those hit scans are forced to look at those big front line characters, and then Freaky, Freaky J gets that free aerial... Uh, aerial combat without any sort of contention from those hit scans but without that lucio you definitely have to play a lot slower and that's where freaky j can be in trouble as you see him off to that left side if you're looking from the defending perspective and uh, looks like he'll be joined up there by osiris on that mccree yeah already fight has to go forward three of these players are just trying to take the high ground a good job from the northern essex side to do so but they need to be able to win the fights in contention down below. The Brawl has to connect, but Maim Shiba connects first. Kermi is out for the count. None of the feeling to support of a Girthquake takes Freaky J. 3D Hizzy will be felled, but that's not the main thing. Maim Shiba is still alive, and it's they, you're going to have to remove that. They have your McCree player of Osiris still up and behind, but they don't have any way to get healed, and it's going to go in the other direction. A nice wall will come through, an amplification field from Zara. This attacking side of Northern Essex has been wow. able to stagger themselves. A, a grab this early tilted is able to just tilt the scales in their favor and completely just take this take to this objective. I don't think we're going to see Dominguez Hill have any chance to contest anymore. No, and in, 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 in contrast to that, look at the look at the old charge for 3D Hizzy. Only 50% to a grab as Tilted comes out with one early, and look at the ults that they were able to build off of it. Kermi gets a shatter. Freaky Jay's almost ready with a barrage. Osiris and Carol both building up to their respective ult ultimates, and that grab alone not only won you the point, but turned the ult economy in your favor after a very stagnant brawl that was that first point, and now they'll get this corner for free, and if I were them, I'd go ahead and pressure that shatter because if they are old tracking they know Kermi has it and I'd start brawling at that second corner they'll do just that do have to get away from that Bob though Danny's gonna go ahead and pop visor looking for a damage increase and attempting to maybe catch one or two of those small players behind uh -oh. but a nice shatter comes through from Maim Sheba and really only does the damage against Kermi but Earthquake finds a dynamite kill to tilt it and puts themselves in a position of dominance right now. They were not able to contest during that corner. I wanted to talk and, and briefly go back for the contest of the of, of the control point of the first point of this hybrid map. It was Zara who dropped the amplification matrix, which then forced the opposing side of Dominguez Hills to take a step back. They're scared of that field. They had to hide, which then gave Tilted, once the grab came up, free reign of every player in that pocket. They were forced into it, no way out, just too locked up. But a barrage comes through. Girthquake denies Freaky J of any opportunity. A grab goes in the other direction for 3D Hizzy, but it's going to go in direction of Tilted as they find the kill instead. And it does look like we're going to see Northern Essex actually can take control of this second corner as well. But they still have to make it to that to that coveted point to increase this time. Osiris does find the high noon kill, and it's, it's just kind of the DPS story here 
Freaky J and Osiris are just making all the space in the world that Kermy's able to walk forward for free. Once you take that corner as that Reinhardt, you have the luxury of really just holding that corner, that natural structure. And with this DPS composition, allowing the damage dealers to do the work for you. And Kermy's doing a great job of recognizing that, not overextending this time on that Reinhardt and being able to hold where he's supposed to and letting others do the work. You don't always have to be the hero and he's demonstrating that as well as possible right now. Yeah, already the fight has to go forward. They're letting this continue onward. Mm. Mame Shiba finds Kermy. That may be a staggering, but Mame Shiba is getting that boost. E metal will have that one popped up and they're gonna continue to try and go Chatter forward. It. Just just full send it at this point in time. Yeah, right? I mean, you, you can shatter it right there to more. get staggers, right? Like mm -hmm. that's exactly what you do is as soon as Mame Shiba gets it right there off the back of that nano, you just shatter to continue the staggers. And now we're not talking about four minutes and ten seconds, we're talking about three minutes and forty-five seconds before another fight even breaks out. Not not a huge deal in terms of the long run, but it would have helped you out. It would have assisted you more than you would attempt. But sure. Bob's going to be sleeping, not with the fish just yet. It's not been taken out. But 3D Hizzy finds Kermy, and a very nice job right now from Dominguez Hills to just completely dominate this section. There's no way they're getting through this corridor. They're shut down at all angles, and not much that can be, I guess, theoretically applied from Northern Essex, except to wait out some of these ultimates from Dominguez Hills and then get ready to pop their own. Yeah, it's they they're nowhere close to this grab dragon combo and I honestly think Tilted just walks in here and throws the grab. I think Freaky J is going to be quick enough with these Dragon Strikes and talented enough to use them in the right manners. Ooh, such a good window fire strike combo. Freaky J is insane. He stares a window in the face Infernosis and instead gets two kills out of it instead of getting killed on his own. It just doesn't seem to exactly be what you're looking for. Freaky J has been so consistent throughout. Now they're going to be able to just snowball forward. There comes Tilted. Now a Dragon Strike to come through. It will be Danny popping the visor, trying to get some damage off. We'll find one of the Healer Rock as well to Osiris. But it's not going to be enough because Kermy gets a Shatter kill to Danny. And they just need to clean up the last player. They're managing to stay alive. And Ash is a little bit more resilient than I think they anticipated at that Nano Boost. But it does not matter in the end. And we will see round one be complete with a 3-0 and uh, a pretty good time frame to work with. Yeah, a very good time frame to work with. 2.45, uh, 0.3 for King's Row can be extremely difficult. Kind of that situation where if the payload gets stuck in the wrong spot, then you're in trouble, right? Um, but they snowball it and they're able to clean it up after I think they only lost about a fight and a half there. Um, Northern Essex before they're able to walk that in. Um, or excuse me, uh, not Northern Essex, uh, CSUDH. Um, Instead, no, it was Northern Essex. I actually don't know what I'm talking about right now. Listen, okay? What they need to do for defense here is hold just as definitively. I think they stick Freaky J back on this Hanzo, opting for the May right now, which I don't hate. But I think, like, especially here in Challengers, I think you just ride someone popping off. You know, like, if, if you're going to, if you're going to ride the hero that you're doing well with, you're going to have just as much success. And I think that's what they need. Freaky J on the Hanzo is a better pick than the May. May provides so much utility, but if you're hitting your shots, I can't be upset at you for playing the hero, right? You know, it may not be what is best for the meta, but you don't have to be a meta slave in in this division. You can allow yourself to be comfortable in a hero and that be the deciding factor in what wins or loses you a game. Yeah, d don't fall suit to the just being stuck to the meta. Try and yeah. find things that work out. That's a huge problem for most any games. I, I always I hate it in R6 because there's such a standard meta for like holding an objective because it, it is a setup based game where you have to set up and then play the rounds. I, I hate seeing the same teams do everything every single time. It's just always the same thing. Change it up, and the second you do, they don't know how to contest you. They don't know how to face you, and it's the same thing for such a wave, web and weave kind of match like like overwatch is and you kind of have to be ready to contend with it but tilted not ready to contend with main sheba as that fire strike will connect immortality field just a little bit late and girthquake and danny finding two of their own no support now and now no tanks for the northern essex side this is a pretty quick stop for yeah. Dominguez Hills to just swing through and find everyone. What I was just about to say, if you thought Northern Essex did it quickly, um, three minutes and 15 seconds with the time bank, that'll translate to about five minutes here. Uh, five minutes and 40, 40 seconds, seconds as we move Big into the phase King's Row. I, uh, <laughs> they're in the future now, as we like to call it. And <laughs> they've got ultimates to their name as they move in here. That's a quick nano boost for E-Metal, only about 15% off. He'll get it just from poking, uh, excuse me, just from healing the poke that Northern Essex is doing and right there has it ready to go now 90% 
That's got to go into Mame Shiba. Ooh, but Freak uh, Freaky J is so clean in Phrenosis. Another pick onto Girthquake. And this needs to can just do it with a recon bolt. Doesn't necessarily need to worry about doing it with Storm Arrow. And a big shatter actually comes through from Kermi, traded back by Mame Shiba. And it's going to go in both directions. Freaky mentioned to take E Metal out. Mame Shiba charges Kermi. So you've lost a frontline tank, but they've lost a healer. So their respawn may be a little bit closer, but it does come with a base find problem. You're going to have Zara drop the field, making this amplification matrix that much more effective. But when Tilted's on the other side of it and not really relying on that extra little boost, they're just trying to get their charge up and increase their damage and maybe make it so that they can bait out a little bit of extra Zarya bubble charge on top of it. Yeah, I love that Mame Sheep was uh, able to read Kermi like a book there. They threw the uh, they threw the amplification matrix up. Kermi instinctively shattered into it, wanted to stop that damage, but Mame Sheba kept his shield up instead of fire striking into it. And that's what turned that fight right there. However, ends up working out in Northern Essex's favor. Speaking of working out in their favor, Osiris will get a Bob pick onto Night Fury. Without her there, I'm not sure how they're able to contest this. Look at how aggressive Kermi is right now. I mean, it, it, when you can be this aggressive, you, you can kind of catch your opponent off guard. They aren't really expecting of it. And when you can change things out, like we've been talking about, don't don't fall victim to sticking to the meta mentality. Play your own game and play it the best way you can. A lot of times you'll see people that are just kind of getting rolled and they say, okay, well, let's just pick comfort picks. Just play what you're comfortable playing. And then they all of a sudden start to play better and they actually can make a return, a resurgence, so to say. And uh, it really is that. You should be able to play the meta and play it well, but you need to be comfortable with the meta to be able to play it at the level that it needs to be meta in. And we're not necessarily seeing a normalized strategy for this brawl because we are seeing some flanks and some position changes yeah. and a lot of different stages of play for this web. And for this web, I guess you could say, that's being woven from both sides. But a flank comes through, Mame Shiba downed? Like, what just way behind. I'm really, Where I'm is really everybody? Confused. I am. I, I, I'm seeing everything. Danny has a flank. Oh my goodness. This might just be devastating. It's completely flipped the map. Kirby has to get their shield up. Can't get it done in time. Earthquake finds two on the top of it. And this will be a sweep. It's uh, only Freaky J left standing. And they're not going to be standing for long. They're getting just, just domed on by 3D Hizzy. I mean, it worked. It, uh, it took a while. It was a long rotation, but it worked. I guess when you start Streets Phase with 5 minutes and 40 seconds on the clock, you can take a tour around King's Row before you, you decide to touch the payload at that rate. But they're able to get it, and they'll... Uh, I, I think as long as they don't get picked, hopefully that's not a caster curse in the next second or two, but as long as Northern Essex doesn't don't get picked here, they should be able to contest this, and you'll see them do that. Now, that's a good immortality field to save Kermi. Yeah, and as of this current moment, it's going to be difficult. Girthquake is able to take Zara out, but now it's going to be a double Diva Bomb from 3D Hizzy. I distinctly remember 3D Hizzy having one for a 5K that's actually on my Twitter and uploaded there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. It was on King's Run as well, actually. Just a weird thing. Girthquake will uh, die, I think, to their own dynamite, I think. You're a great caster. He will uh, die. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how they died though. That's that's the point of contention. I'm confused, Unicorn. Right? You're hunting me down when I'm already down. All right, don't kick Let's me. Let's just do that from now on. Kermy will die. And yeah, I now think they're all dead. Carol dies. And... Yeah. But anyway, Mame Sheba does get the Bionade there. That'll sustain him for a while. Wants to brawl forward onto Kermi. Has all the sustain in the world, except Kermi will get Nano Boost. It wants to walk forward onto Mame Sheba. There, great defense matrix. Freaky J popping off. Uh, Infernosis, I, I, if they win, it's my MVP, 100%. Freaky I don't care what anyone says. Uh, popping off on this Hanzo, unstoppable. Uh, I don't know how they deal with it unless they switch to double bubble and just focus the heck out of him. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta beat the devil out of him, as Bob Ross likes to say, and that's exactly what you're seeing. It's kind of just there. Look at this like high ground contention, the levels of play they're doing. Freaky J a little bit farther up, two players in the main line. High ground, 3D Hizzy diving to the top and finding Izara. And now you're going to see these frontline tanks of Kermi just kind of rush in, knowing there's not really a chance as they're flanked on both sides and pay the price accordingly. But a Bob will be tossed Jay. out, trying to buy some time on top of it. Freaky J with a flank dragon finds E Metal as they had managed to tap one as well. But Danny and a refrag and Mame Shiba takes a drink as well, dropping down into the pits below. 
and it's going to be yet another Northern Essex victory for that initial fight, but they've got to maintain this for the next two minutes if they just want to win it out. God, and you, we talk about two minutes. I mean, look at how impressive this hold is already. Just to remember that Streets Face started with five minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. You're already down to a minute 50 here. This has been a great hold so far, and as they approach this corner, look at this. I love how they back off here. I want to bait the team into a Graviton Surge, and I think that's exactly what they're looking for. I want to see Kermie back up and let Freaky J farm for a little bit, then throw the grab. They don't have the support they need right now. Yeah, they definitely need a little bit more assistance. Girthquake will be able to find that, bringing a seventh person to the field, bringing Bob in for the count, but Night Fury uh -oh. finds two. She is finding so much success, and the Diva Bomb, a 3D Hizzy, will find yet another. A, a regroup needs to come through from this Northern Essex side, but it's running out of time, and they got to contest. Yeah, they're going to have to touch soon here. Kermi is going to be able to get back. Oh, that's oh, a huge no. shatter. Great immortality field to sustain. That one's still a little early, but at least it baits the side of CSUDH away from them. Danny's finding picks on Zara, though. That's a big shatter. If they can clean up Mame Sheba in this time frame, it's good enough, but it's not quite there, Infernosis. Yeah, I mean, you're just an icing on the cake at that point in time. When you've got Danny, he goes, okay, well, now I've got Amax. All right, like, this is all it comes down to. They're just cleaning up. Maybe it's been a little bit too long in the practice range, and now they're just a little too good. But they'll have a minute on the clock. Obviously, Northern Essex has a little bit more time to work with, but it's still anyone's game. There is a world where this ends in a tie, I think. Possibly, maybe. I know Septilin's cracked a joke about that. I'm sure he hates that actuality. But... That's just rude, yeah. <laughs> It, what, you know, would it overwatch 518 if it can end in a tie it will like <laughs> that's that's what's important to remember uh for all of you dedicated fans not only do we love you but uh hope you dr hope you're drinking your caffeine there is another game after this yes there is and that it's uh it's 1 30 in the morning eastern so uh i at 1 30 est there's another game after this i i hope I hope you called out of work tomorrow. I hope you don't have any <laughs> tests coming up, whatever you're doing. Uh, tell your mom that you might be screaming late at the uh, at the monitor tonight because we're going for the long run. And Northern Essex is taking us there right next to CSUDH. This has been a close King's Row so far. With this additional time bank, if they're able to cap quickly, I think the time bank doesn't matter too much because once you're on streets phase, you're just looking for that overtime fight, right? But if you're able to hold first point, that's where that time bank really comes into play and will matter a lot. Ricky J already up to 15% there, finding some good poke onto the face of 3D Hizzy's mech. Yeah, and unfortunately, if you're if you're gonna deal damage and you're not able to complete a kill, that also gives charge over to E Metal into Night Theory. So while it does kind of work in reverse against you, a nice anti nade going anti, to Kermit, yeah. and it's going to devastate. Mame Sheba just doing so much damage on top of it. Girthquake finds tilted. This is gonna be another push where we probably see Dominguez Hills just sweep through this control point. This is a completely different team than what we saw on actual control maps. They struggled in the last two rounds of Elios, and those are control. That's the entire mode in this first section is control and they say not nah, we in control it's out here and they just completely sweep it so don't laugh at that <laughs> carol with the mercy jumps on point trying to stall as long as she can but all in vain is the rest of uh the rest of northern essex fell quickly once again e-metal and carol throwing these antis back and forth carol and the mercy now but on previous maps and E-Metal on King's Road, these antis have been the deciding factor in so many fights. We find ourselves in overtime and not a single ultimate for the side of Northern Essex to really stop this push. I don't want to see them dragging this early. I want to wait till Kermit can get on the fight, or excuse me, get on the payload and start fighting. Then you throw the dragon. See, they need to go now. There's no one there to follow up on that. Yeah, it's not it's not exactly the strongest position. Girthway was able to find Osiris. Carol will re bring back Osiris, but now you've lost your mainline tank of Kermit. Yeah. They're going to be able to walk through with this again. They'll, I think Northern Essex just needs to back up. Please escape. Get out of there. Ooh, and an, an anti dust kill Freaky J. Not the right position again. And Dominguez Hills could actually reach this second point. Yeah, it's looking like they might be able to here. They're going to want to get Kermie back once again with this Lucio. It was so important and so vital to a Reinhardt composition where you want to get Kermie back as quickly as possible so your team can start moving forward, so your DPS can poke and have value, build up ultimates in this overtime situation. Instead, Kermie's just now back, and now he's taking so much poke just to walk to the payload. 
Yeah, Amplification Matrix does come down from Zara. They're contesting as best they can. A high Noon did come out, but it's not going to be enough. Danny drops the visor. Shut down by Osiris as they'll stun them out and complete the kill. Fanning the hammer, I believe. And Freaky J finds Girthquake. And Anti finding so much damage, but it's Kermy with a shatter that completes this off. No way to contest. 3D Hizzy stuck in the remech. And it's going to end off Northern Essex. Well, they could not hold the first point, but they will stop from reaching the second. Osiris saved the day with the flash fan onto Danny there. That visor was going to clean up. Absolutely. Excuse me. There was no matrix there from the side of Tilted left after the uh, after the barrage came through. He had to be what stopped that visor from killing everybody. Did so perfectly. Kermy finds the shatter just to clean it all up. Unfortunately, Night Fury not in a great spot as that Mercy unable to get the res and does eventually fall herself uh, to that shatter. Excuse me, to the swings of Kermy. But that's a not a terrible hold, but definitely a good push. If I'm uh, if I'm on the side of CSUDH, I'm screaming winnable right now. I'm saying that this is definitely a winnable King's Row. You can go pretty much as long as you want build up as many ults as you can you will still get to an overtime situation where you can dump all of them yeah and at this point in time i mean northern essex they they took this point and they did it in a really convoluted way and it gave them time they didn't get it as quick as we've seen both times dominguez hills do but their streets phase was cleaner their last phase was cleaner the factory stage and they ultimately had more time but they they kind of can fall into the route of of going in and playing the same way they did previously, but they're gonna bring it up differently. We're seeing a Symmetra come out from Freaky J. We're seeing that Bastion. This is uh -oh. the this is the statue player. This We're gonna see it. him go up top. This could be interesting. They're gonna go up. No, they're gonna go to the high ground behind, not the statue. And they're gonna look to maybe punish a little bit further. This Bastion should be able to find some damage. Immortality Field placed down and removed. Osiris fighting Danny off. Immortality for him. Immortality Field, but Osiris finds Danny and Recollection. Not much they can do beyond it because they've lost a little bit of damage. Support tilted finds 3D Hizzy and now tilted at a massive amount of charge, looking to try and take out the player e-metal as well but it'll be freaky j to find night fury move this bastion get him in a more aggressive position mame shiva's just able to kill kermy because osiris is chilling up there doing absolutely nothing on the bastion they are able to raise uh, res kermy finally it looks like this is still going to go into uh oh the pulse bomb oh man this can absolutely still turn in the way of csudh well no they don't have a lucio i was going to say if they can get mame shiva back fast enough but instead you'll see uh you'll see northern essex take it a good pulse bomb but not quite enough to stop it osiris on that bastion positioning was a little questionable i understand he was dealing with uh i believe it was girthquake on the uh on the tracer previously that was trying to shut him down and that's what he was dealing with but you had two supports trying to support him through that tracer duel and nobody up there for kermy trying to help him through that yeah, difficult position to go through. Kermy finds three with a nice Earth Shatter, but Immortality Field saving the lives just ever so slightly. Now Mame Sheba returning a back, but will be felled by Kermy in the process. Assistance, of course, by a couple of the DPS players of that Baptiste, Mercy, and the Osiris player. Freaky J collecting on top. Kermy will have been felled by Danny, but immediately brought back the resurrection coming through. They've got a minute. They can lose one fight and try to make the return, but it doesn't look like they're losing these fights. Northern Essex are swinging quite physically, and they have a Graviton Surge if they want to make a combo. And this is where you stop, right? Like, if you're CSUDH, you say, okay, as of this point, no more ultimates until it's overtime. Try and sustain, try and make it a slow fight. We can get to overtime, even with as quick as it is. But with that grab, they're going to have to throw something here. Yeah, they're going to get Ant into the process, though, making it difficult. Mame Shiba is going to get manoed in the process. Oh, Just no. take this L. Northern Essex, lose this fight and reset. You've got to get out of there and fast, survive. Though. If Osiris gets refragged here right at the last second, it's not going to matter. You've got to get a Lucio. You've got to switch it up. Carol Wills make that switch over. you got to get a high noon situated in the objective. You're going to have to deal with a visor, and you're going to have to deal with a diva bomb. You might not even make it back in time. Well, it's sure going to be pretty can. darn close, well, but they're going to have to straight rust to this payload and contest it instantaneously they'll make it back but it's such a bad situation where they have to brawl immediately osiris has to find picks here they do they have to block the bomb nobody dies to it it's immortality field down it's a huge oh. shatter from Mame shiba danny's gonna clean him up with the visor csudh you're gonna take king's row we're gonna see it go all the way this is a series we've been saying it tried and true and we might actually be going all the way to 2 a.m to see this one get finished off it has been a constant best of seven and playing all seven. This is, by all accounts, an insane night for Overwatch.
insane night. Uh, this, I mean, this deserves this, this is deserves the play of the game. That shatter finds one, two, three, four, cleans up. Danny uh, finds everything with the visor. And who was that slept back there? What a clutch sleep from E Metal as well. I mean, that that was just, oh, I mean, I can't even rave as much as I would love to rave. 31,000 damage blocked by Kermi, but Girthquake alone had 51 eliminations in that match. Girthquake, that is, by all accounts, on a Richter scale. I mean, th there are phenomenal, it is insane. You like that one? It took you a sure, second. Yeah. I saw your brain start churning there. Yeah. Uh, it, they did phenomenal, and Dominguez Hills will win it off of it. I, uh... I found myself in another Boise UCSC situation. I feel like I'm speechless. This is gonna go all the way. I I, I just I, you, you're feeling it at this point, right? Like both teams are swinging back and forth, and that time that felt neck and neck, right? Like that felt as close as it can get. Overtime be overtime. Those last couple meters being the deciding factor, and ultimately the biggest shatter in the world comes through and saves the day for CSUDH when they did not have a lot of ultimates to their name to try and defend with. Yeah, and it, it's going to be pretty interesting what's going to happen. We're going to jump to another short ad break, and then we'll be right back. But it's going to be the final of all finals, and then you're going to have another game right after that. And those players, well, they're going to be a, a bit of attrition to see who tires out the fastest. But nonetheless, my name is Infernosis, joined here by Unicorn. We'll see you guys in a few short minutes. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
Well, welcome back, everybody, to the NECC. And while it may be pretty late, I believe at around 2 a.m. EST, it is still Overwatch Final Hours. My name is Infernosis, joined here by Unicorn, and we've got a spectacular matchup. This is the penultimum round, the map that will decide it all. We're going to Route 66. What a great way to finish this one off. This is, of course, the team of CSUDH versus the penultimum Northern Essex. Winner takes all, and it's going down to the wire. Good morning, Infernosis. It is um, good morning. Yeah. I hope you're doing well today. It's a new day from when we first started talking to each other tonight. I it's just figured 15, you should know that. Uh, we're going to Route 66, like you mentioned. And man, Escort, um, I, I don't know which team is strong. I actually have no idea who's going to win. I have zero clue. It's been, as we kind of talked about, these back and forth situations of if it's King's Row, Northern Essex is crazy, or CSUDH is crazy. That one was very close. But if it's Ilios, Northern Essex is crazy. If you go all the way back to Volskaya, you know you know what I'm saying? Like, it's this back and forth, and it seems so decided based on the map pick. And, you know, we were talking backstage, and uh, I, I agree after, after further thought. We got to give it up to Tilted. Uh, these grabs are constant. Ready? Absolutely constant. And we see him go back to it now. Freaky J on the Fara. I love this comp from them. I absolutely love this comp from them. This is what wins you this. Play something uh, not necessarily meta, but Freaky J's Fara is crazy. Osiris has been popping off on the Ash. Give him the damage boost. Give me the immor immortality field. We know the grabs are going to be there from Tilted. I think this is a winning composition from the side of Northern Essex. There's nothing weird about this. I don't need a Lucio in this. I just need Kermy to play slow. Yeah, I mean... All right, let's think about this in, in, in multiple ways to go. We, we talked about it. Bringing in two mainline supports, it, it's it's strange at the very least, right? I mean, it's kind of coming up. It's it's working because it's just not sure how to be played against. It's a yeah. lot of healing that's being put out, but there's not utility really behind it. They're having to rely on certain things to get through it. And it's working, but it's probably only working in this fashion for a certain reason. The right switch makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, it definitely does. And... Um... You know, I think over the break, I kind of decided that I was going to be more transparent about it. It's just bad, right? Like, you just you just don't play on a bat in any situation with a Reinhardt. You just don't do it. Girthquake finds a pick there onto Osiris. Um, you do need a Lucio in these comps, and that's why you see Mame Shiva so slow walking forward. He can't make enough space without taking all the poke in the world. And so these fights go on for so long because neither Reinhardt can make a move without that Lucio to get inside of a team. Tilted once again fragging out, and look at that shatter from Kermi. So quick to build it on the back of that poke that his DPS are providing. Once again, with that Lucio, Mame Shiba is able to walk forward a lot faster and build up a Graviton, or excuse me, not a Graviton, a Shatter himself. Yeah, when you're able to build a Shatter that quickly, it, it can be debilitating to try and face off against. We saw that on uh, Volskaya, if I remember correctly, where Kara was able to get the boost and just boost up Kermi, who just got three swings, got the Shatter, and then they swept first point. And that was really a pacemaker for them. That was where they kind of made that return. But Zara and Osiris up on top of Big Earls. They're looking to put some damage off as the Amplification Matrix will be put through. But I think there's just a bit of a stagger as this attacking team just doesn't uh, want to beat this. CSUDH just say, nah, we'll wait it out. Not a big deal. Well, it's it, it's why I don't, I don't mean to keep repeating myself. They can't peek it, right? Look at how slow they are walking around this corner. How much damage from Osiris and Freaky J do you take before you're able to walk forward? Uh, you want to be nanoed. You want to run fast right now, but you just can't. It's it's strange. It's definitely strange. The grab does come through. This will be put to some effect as Tilted will be able to capitalize and finish off Danny, but you've lost Osiris. Girthquake, the Ash of that side, will be able to capitalize instead, and the revive will come through. Caro will go for it, and this is this is good because now you have a Bob in place. There's going to be two Bobs on the board. Caro still has the Valkyrie to go through as well, and Kermi can shatter once again. But you really need to charge Barrage, and you really need to get Amplification Matrix up once again, because if you can still hold that high ground and force them to take more steps back, you're giving more time for Tilted and more time for Freaky to get that ult charge and match with the rest of your team. Yeah, it, it's exactly what they'll have all the time in the world to do, because I don't have a Lucio on the other team. <clears throat> and uh, that, uh, that Kermit Shatter will be enough to buy some more time. And here we are, exactly what we were talking about. There's the amplification matrix, and Mame Shiba can't do anything but try and walk as slow as possible past it. 
It, it, it's not a good thing. A, a grab will come through. This one's actually fat from Tilted with some sort. Now it's Freaky Barrages 3. They'll be able to find one and remove 3D Hezzy's mechs in the process. Carol revives Kermi. And that fight, which it looked like it would, could have gone in CSUDH's favor, will be immediately returned as Northern Essex have a dominant hold on this corner. Diamond hands all the way. They are not letting go. To the moon is Northern Essex right now, holding this defense here. And, you know, uh, shout out, speaking of Tilted, shout out to Caleb Gluby there. When we're backstage between scenes here, just another super talented Overwatch player like me. I'm not the only caster slash producer who's super good at the game. He is as well. And he <laughs> called how well Tilted was playing. And now that I've got my eyes on Tilted, he's playing out of his mind. Already 27% to another grab. And I think keeping the charge and playing correctly with your main tank is the thing that he's doing here. Well, I hate the position he's in now, but he lives. No one pushes him, thankfully. Uh, but it tilted. Yeah, there he goes. He's dead. Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, Saris gets brought back. Tilted will be finished off by Main Shiva. Maybe they'll be able to make it back in time. It's going to rely on Northern Essex to get some frags. Kermit's going to have to force an aggressive stance, but Main Shiva finds Carol on a nice fire strike. And now it's just cleaning up the snowball. They should be able to make it back in time to actually contest this. But I guess the question remains, will it even matter? They don't got any ultimates. They don't got they no time. They don't got any ultimates. And now they, they don't got any space to actually step forward and contest the point. Why are you laughing? I made a bit out of it. Like, you, let me have my bit. Stop laughing before the bit ends. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to try and step through. Kermit's going to be forced back. They're going to try and boost forward. They'll stop in the last second. Kermit gets shattered and finds so much. Kermit finds two. Refract back by Mame Shima, but we may see Carol go for the revive. Valkyrie does get popped instantaneously once it up. Sara finding Mame Shima. Revive does come through back to Kermit. The barrage fells, and now it's looking like NEC. The Northern Essex Community College side will actually be able to finish this one off strong. Bob, not there. And it's going to go round one complete. They couldn't make it. Can Northern Essex do it instead? You've got to assume they can. Uh, I mean, Route 60... Uh, okay, first of all, I can't stand the map. But it's... Okay, no, it's no, no, no. We're, we're digesting that first. Why? It's terrible. Why? As far as Escort goes, it is hands down the worst. Okay, why? It, because it... I think it's just kind of flawed from an attacker's perspective. I think the chokes that you have to push through are absolutely horrible. The high ground that you can take, you have to go leaps and bounds just to get on top of big earls. And that's that's why you play hit scans, right? I play a widow back there because I want to force the enemy team to commit resources and overextend just to get to me. Route 66 makes that decision for the DPS player and doesn't rely on them being good and making that decision for themselves. When they're able to stage so far away naturally from any sort of opposition that wants to jump on them, then you're immediately at an advantage that the map is creating for you and it's not any fault of your or the attacking side to you know, no one's to blame, right? It's just the way the map is designed. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Lucy. No, I agree with you. I was just really interested to see what your oh, okay, plan was. Right. <laughs> I figured it would be a great way to buy a couple moments. Of okay, time. well, all right. Well, you I, was, I, I like your I like your your way to take it because as a widow main, like this map's fun, but it's it's flawed. It is not a good attacking map, and and even for defense, it can kind of. A snowballing is really bad on this map. It is yeah. really bad because it is a yeah. long distance to travel. It is really egregious corners to step around. They can be a double-edged store to face off against, and it just doesn't pan out in your direction. But looking at this double-edged blade, any Northern Essex, I should phrase, sorry, is continuing to try and put the brawl. Kermi is just wanting to get that charge up as fast as possible, but Name Shiba is just that 10% of head. That may be all it needs for them to win this first fight. Ooh, big anti there gets cleansed by Tilted. Tilted on fire on the Zarya. Immediately cleanses that anti onto Kermi. Now he's got a Bionade. He's able to walk forward a little slowly because, well, is Kermi stuck? No. Okay, that was close. Did you see that? He looked a little stuck there. It looked a little strange to begin with. But, you know, Kermi able to sustain. And look how quickly both Anas are building up this nano boost. That's a huge anti from Carol. She's going to single handedly carry this fight. This could be in it for Gnosis. Oh my goodness, Unicorn, this, this, I think this just might be it. Now they've Keep staggered on. Danny Keep as well. They're just completely in. trapped. Uh, Kermi is, is unstoppable in that swing. I mean, there's nothing they can do. Danny Keep will be able to contest for just a few short on. moments. 
This, this is going to be so difficult. That Sonic Arrow will make it a little bit difficult. Freaky has some information they can play with. They've already got time to be able to step back, but Tilted has grab. You've got Amplication Matrix. Maybe Freaky steps Just forward. Can grab and go out. Grab, but any mortality field. They've caught three. They're capitalizing. When E-Metal finds one, Danny has the visor. It's going to be stopped. Danny finds three, and they're still in this one. Danny with a visor to save the day, tilted just a little too late on that Graviton Surge, needed to come out as they were in the tunnel, that way the DPS are forced to touch because the main tank and the off tank can't, and that would have been the deciding factor. Somehow, CSUDH are still in this. Well, I think even our producer, I think even our producer is in utter disbelief, though, to be fair, he's been at this for, for am, seven, yeah. eight hours now, so I'm, I'm, I'm honestly shocked he can breathe correctly sometimes and just forgets when you get so tired, because I was like that last night and this morning as well, so... You know, it gets to that stage, but the rush does come through. The Brawl attempted to go on. You're going to have Osiris drop in with their own visor, where maybe she finds Carol in the process. Now, no heals. Immortality field taken out. They've got an amplification matrix as well, making it a little bit more difficult to contend. Northern Essex just has to take a step back and regroup again. They're not winning that fight. Okay, hear me out. They push forward here. They force the Bob out. They either they either burst Bob down or they shield away from it. Freaky J needs to go over to the right side of Big Earl's and Dragon straight through the gas station. That way it cuts off the point and either forces Mame Shiba to walk backwards through it or walk forwards into Kermi. That's how you win this right here. You turn this with one ultimate alone. Yeah, that's absolutely. Here comes the Bob. You need to contend this. You still have about a minute if you could just burn down Bob pretty quickly. But a Dragon Strike does come through. It's going to dish out a lot of damage. Maybe she was stepping into that. There. It somehow does not kill. But an Inflammation of Matrix. Oh my goodness, a Shatter out of nowhere. But it's going to be Danny that's once again saving their team. Danny is single handedly the backpack carry. It was Girthcake previously. Now it's Danny. It's cleaned up. And CSUDH are fighting for their lives. And they're doing an exceptional job at that. My jaw is on the floor right now. This is one fight territory. It has to be here. I'm not sure Tilted can build a grab fast enough without the Lucio there to support him. Zara does go on to the Lucio. You see Freaky J nowhere near it. Carol's Nano Boost is the only ultimate that can carry this fight, and they've got to get away from a visor. Yeah, it looks like they're going to take the background. Northern Essex looking to maybe contend from gonna up top. So they're going to take so much time to do this, though. They might not even make it to the point. They're trying to go big. Earl's boost does go down now with a Kermi, but it's going to be a visor from above. Danny's aided this one off. There's no supports in this fight. You can't contend. Freaky may find one. No. Kermi finds another, but it's not really looking that hot. Tilted dies. Freaky's able to contend. It's just Freaky they and two. Turned. They got it. They turned it. The DPS has saved the day. Osiris and Freaky might have been enough, but Gertwake will make it back in time. E Metal is close as well on the Lucio. They're going to be able to contend because they have a Lucio themselves and can speed boost back. But they brought the Hammond. They brought the ball and Ryan has returned as crazy. well. There's no ultimates left for Northern Essex. And there's a shadow for Mamashiba. No. It finds three. This might just be it. They're finishing off this fight. It's not going to be able to be contended. Northern Essex looks like they will be felled. Oh my god, down to the wire. And it's going to go that way. CSUDH, take it. It goes all the way to map seven, route 66. CSUDH come away as their challengers division grand finalists. They're able to come away with the victory. I, I can't believe it, Infernosis. That should have gone the way of NECC four different times on that route 66 map alone. I, I, am, I am in utter disbelief. I, I, I am... I am... I am in utter disbelief. This was... Uh, why did we get the two best games possible here for Overwatch tonight? Don't question it. Just thank Caroline and... Uh, and um, and what's his name? He's right here. Caleb. <laughs> you mean Noah? The other Overwatch director? Oh, Noah. Yeah. Noah too. <laughs> Listen. Listen okay, it's, it's two way. in the morning. Get okay? it's way, but come on. <laughs> it's two in the morning. Okay. Look. <laughs> I... Oh, what a series. What a oh series. Oh my goodness, spectacular. I, oh. They had it. They had it. They were right there. Uh, tilted, you played out of your mind. Look at... Tilted, look at me. Just grab the wall. Just grab the main tanks away. Just grab the tanks away. DPS are forced to touch the point by themselves, and then they die immediately. Then main tanks come and touch afterwards, but there's no damage to follow up tilted because you killed the DPS because they had to touch point because you grabbed the wall. Uh, uh, CSUDH, very deserving.
of the victory, though. They played a heck of a season, deserve the win. Your number one seed, take it. The antithesis of what we saw from the Boise State UCS game, and they kill it, right? They the Santa Cruz, right? That one. <laughs> Don't do this right now. All right, I'm busy. I'm trying to do something. This is serious. Sorry, I, I won't they be take exactly away. Anyway. They go forward with a W, and it all works out. CSUDH made it a series. They brought it here for our entertainment. All 118 million of you in chat, I hope this was the series you wanted. I hope it was the series you needed. I know I enjoyed it. Infernosis, we're going to send it over to the panel. Coach Jim doesn't love me enough to let me go talk to them, even though I want to. Anything mm -hmm. to part to to say good night here before we go to bed after a very long night but such a fun one well this does officially end this semester for me and i believe for you as well yeah, when it comes it to the necc so just once again thank you everybody for having us not just here yeah. for the playoffs and the finals but throughout the whole season overwatch has been a blast throughout you'll have a you'll be in good hands tonight with nuclear inceptalance and then you'll be in good hands with they believe yelker and neely for the champions division tomorrow it's always and been a pleasure to cast here Absolutely. And, and on a more serious note, Infernosis and I joke around a ton. On a serious note, we appreciate every single one of you to support a, whether we like to admit it or not, still a, a small setting here that is ever growing and supports a collegiate environment where we can support players and we can support casters and producers and coaches who are up and coming who have so much potential to make it big infernosis caleb being great examples of two extremely talented players or excuse me two extremely talented people and all so the players wrong. who can come and shut up idiot and then so many people i'm trying to be serious right now and so many players who have the potential to do all these great things we support and love you guys so much for supporting us through it huge shout out once again to caleb running all this production in the back i'm unicorn this is it for me from the season. Hopefully I get to do some off-season stuff. If not, I hope to see every single one of you guys around through next season. It's legitimately and as sincerely as possible such a pleasure to do this for all of you. I love it so much and could not be here without all of you. Ditto. <laughs> okay, bye! <laughs>
Uh, so, uh, just a crazy, crazy finish there. I'm waiting for our producer to put... What am I introducing? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm waiting for my producer to put our interview uh, together here in the <laughs> lobby. He's like, Inter introduce the interview. I'm trying, bro, but you haven't given me the lobby yet. We gotta, you gotta bring everybody here into the lobby, Caleb, before oh, I can introduce man. the interviews. There so, they come. Uh, maybe do your job, Caleb. I don't know. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, let's go. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody from Dominguez Hills. I feel like I talked to your team more than I talked to anybody else. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's a great honor to be Hello. here. <laughs> so who who wants to talk about that final hold right there? Who wants to talk about it? <laughs> oh my god, dude, that final hold. Yeah, that one. That's the one we want to talk about. Who wants to talk okay. about it? I mean I can I can talk about it. Um Come on, team honestly, captain. Okay, so honestly from the from the get go we you know as a team we have to of course trust each other and always be communicating. Especially when everyone's screaming at the top of their lungs on that <laughs> final ten seconds of the hold, um, you know we had we had to control our nerves and you know play it confidently. Especially when the enemy team's literally like inches away from the last point, we just had to make sure like okay who can touch. You know if he dies who's gonna go in next, and then you know it's the biggest part in that you know last few seconds of that match was just teamwork and trust. Like, I'm trusting everyone on my team to make the right decision, <clears throat> you know, during those high-stakes moments, because that's literally what the game came down to, and just super grateful for my team and everyone who supported us. Let's let's go back. Let's let's talk about maybe not as much as that what you want to talk about. Let's talk about what happened on King's Row. It looked like you guys might have had that one in the extra rounds. A perfect take on the point to unlock the payload, and then just stalled out right before the second point. Uh, what was going through your guys' mind when you went uh, down on that one? Before Honestly, the when, point. We went, when we went down <laughs> on it. Everything's a blur for me right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're still fixing it. I don't know where anything is. That's the last fight. Fair enough. Uh, just because it was, it was a really good... Uh, it was it was a really fun map to watch King's Row. You guys basically played the first point perfectly. Uh, some of what you guys did, I, I'm going to keep for a highlight reel uh, to show my team next year so they know what I want them to do there on King's Row. Uh, Jacob, did you have any questions you wanted to ask? Yeah, just a real quick question. We'll turn it over to, to, to Unicorn if he's got a question or two. What's it mean, guys, to become uh, that, that program now, the first school in our, our conference's short history to win two titles in one semester? It honestly means the world to us because, you know, the our program literally started no more than a year ago. Um, we didn't even have, like, a complete Overwatch team when we started. And now we're just out here winning championships. And, you know, it just it means a lot. You know, the students put in work, everyone puts in work, and you just keep believing. And, you know, every day we're always on talking to each other and playing the game. Well, awesome. you guys Congrats, did guys. work. You guys do work, but I think Jacob said the unicorn's here, and he might have a couple of questions. Hey guys, first of all, congratulations to all of you. Um, every single one of you played your butts off tonight. It was a crazy series, and the biggest congratulations. Such a fun one to cast. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I do Thank want to you. talk about route 66 those final seconds oh, those God. last <laughs> seconds oh i screamed at tilted to just grab the tanks off of point so they couldn't touch however you guys got the contest ended up losing that fight as well came back and uh, held for a crazy contest night fury are you with me oh yes yeah, sir <laughs> okay, talk to me about the comms there because I want to know what it was like supporting in those last seconds. You come back, were you the Lucio, I believe? Oh, uh, no, it was E Metal. Okay, um, so E Metal and you. So, Night Fury, who were you playing? I was playing Baptiste. Okay, throughout the entire series, your Baptiste is just a third DPS to deal with. You're absolutely crazy finding the headshots left and right. In those final moments, can you walk me through what your job or what you feel like your job is in those last seconds of contesting? Where's the immortality feel going? Who are you focusing in those final moments as Bap? 
Uh, to be honest, I was so stressing out in the end because everybody was screaming. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I okay. Guess, like, right, mm, right when I touch the card, I'm gonna need to put my aim right, right there. I got you. I got you. So just kind of focusing whoever needs the heals in that moment and just kind of treating it dynamically. Whoever's looking critical is who's getting the health, right? Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, well, E-Metal, to talk to you briefly as well, the antis back and forth from Carol and from you were on point all night. So many fights were determined by an anti-grenade. What's the what's the situation like there? Is that a prepped thing where you guys go back and forth and, and try and decide when an anti is more viable? Or is it more so, I'm going to throw a bionade at my tank, and if it makes someone purple, I love it for it? Yeah, um, usually I just throw an anti win. There's like a opportunity to splash, um, like some, yeah, some people, but yeah, that's just about it with the anti. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. Well, I'll keep it short and sweet. I'll pass it back to Jim and Jacob. Jacob, happy birthday as well. And congratulations Thanks, to CSUDH. <laughs> so deserving of the dub there. You guys played out of your minds. Both sides did. One team had to win. Glad it was you guys. You guys played out of your minds. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can appreciate you. You know, uh, we did it once already, but Twitch check. We get some more happy birthday, Jacob, in chat. And then hey. Jacob, hey. Uh, I, I think. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, let me give it away a trophy. This is what they're waiting for. They're not waiting to talk to us. They're waiting to see this. This is coming out west. This is going out to Dominguez Hills. Guys, you got to build a bigger case. Ruben, our guy out there at Cal State Dominguez hills congratulations another necc championship going out to the beautiful dominguez hills congratulations guys well deserved what an evening what a night another necc championship yes sir yeah so. <laughs> one for the ages guys one for the ages you're going to remember that one forever one for yeah. the ages. And that will bring us finally to our fourth match of the night. The one I've personally been waiting for. Fresno State going up against Carroll University. Jacob, who do you like in this one? Uh, I like Fresno, to be honest. No. Everybody, everybody should like Fresno. They're a terrifically good team this year. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love the Carroll program. I, I do. Fresno's a buzzsaw right now. We'll see what happens, but that's that's my lead. I personally, I would love to see Carroll win just because the Peacocks beat Carroll earlier this season. So I would like to think that my team is good enough to beat the eventual finals champions. Uh, Mr. Producer, are we good to go? All right. We will take it to an ad break. And when we get back on the other side, match number four, Carroll versus Fresno State. Don't go anywhere. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it. 